Okay, well, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, uh, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for March 22nd, uh, 2023. The time is 6 p.m. Um, again, I, I want to make a motion at some point to shorten this language because I am really close to done of reading this. We've yep. got to find a certain way to. Well, I think we can stop doing it. Um, as after of, the, the 20, March, 30. March 30th. Yeah, that would be great. Somehow we should shorten it anyways. Um, uh, I'll read it now. Uh, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20 until March 31st, 2023, soon to be extended for two more years. Um, please note that while an option for remote uh, attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public. The meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Um, for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the, of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with the remote participation found on the agenda, which you can find on the Town of Deerfield's website under the select board um, meeting. You can click on that link and it'll take you to the Zoom link. Uh, there's a Zoom link. You can join by Zoom. If you want to call by phone, there's a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. So we'll call the meeting to order. Um, we we did have an executive session scheduled for five, but we um, have passed over that. Um, so we're uh, opening up first for public comment. Um, anybody with any comments on anything on the agenda tonight that'd like to speak? Happy to hear them now. Any hands? Nobody talking? No need now. Okay. Um, so we have uh, we have some appearances tonight um, at 6.30. Uh, Senator Joe Comerford will um, join us, hopefully, here in person um, or online, but I think here in person. And then at 7, we have an ad hoc Human Rights uh, Committee presentation of the Human Rights Recommendations. That's the work they've been working on. That'll be around 7 o'clock. Um, so we'll start with select board announcements and uh, anything you want to hit on? Um, I Jim? just want people to... Um... Be aware of our Deerfield Yard by Yard uh, launch launch event is April eighth from two to four in the afternoon here at the town hall. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, conversions of um, lawns to native uh, meadows and pollinator gardens and you know healthy soils. It's pretty exciting because we have um, plants, we have books, we have consulting services all to raffle off so if you come the chances are you're going to walk away with some wonderful um, items that will work in your yard and again the reason why we're doing this is because um, you know between COVID and climate change it's pretty obvious that people need to you know have some power to have impact and mm -hmm. if you work in your yard and cumulatively we work together we're going to have impact so um, it's pretty exciting uh, it's now on um, uh, Deerfield now. And yeah, it's short. It will be on. <laughs> yeah, and I'll have Chris put it on our um, web page tomorrow. So great. And then, of course, we have 350th activities happening. I see Chris Harris is here, and um, he has been working very, very hard to make sure that we have some um, fireworks here in South Deerfield. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'll hit on quickly. I had a meeting. Um, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday um, at the um, uh, Mass DOT. Uh, Senator Senator Comerford was there, um, and uh, Chief Pachurik and um, Kevin Scarborough were there. Uh, Chris Chris came, and we uh, sat around and talked to them about the common rehabilitation and the. Um, looking at the possibility of taking over Sugarloaf Street and Park Street 
and possibly Conway, but there's a question whether Conway was transferred at an earlier date. We're not really sure about that. So we're doing a little research there. Um, so this is all kind of started around kind of trying to redo the common and redo the, the crosswalks that lead to the common. And, you know, our initial plan, those crosswalks are very large, long because of the, just the geography of what, what it is. Um, so DOT last year had some ideas on how to, you know, shorten that space and add some islands and slow traffic down. And we are all excited about that. But again, it's not our road. So, and we don't have funding for that. So, um, and then, you know, the discussion was, well, if you took over the road, the town took over the road, we'd have access to complete streets funding, different ways that we could get grants uh, that we can't get now. Um, and we'd have control of the road, but our, our, always our main concern we all share is that the liability of what the infrastructure is underneath the road, the drainage and all. So I think, um, you know, we went back and forth on that a little bit and I think they're willing to help. And what they want to do is what we had asked for is that if, if they could camera all the drainage under Sugarloaf street um, and park street, we could get an understanding of what condition the main trunk lines are and, and the feeder lines are, and, you know, the, manholes and that kind of thing so really just as we did with our sewer get an understanding of what the assets look like and what we need to get done so they're gonna um we were tasked with meeting with kevin to come up with um priorities on what depending on how much it costs they would say they said they would do it but it depends on the cost how much they'll do so uh kevin and i and whoever else wants to join we're going to get together and talk about what um our priorities are for cameraing so we would look at that and and we need by Monday we need to get that back to um to DOT so they knew what the tiers were of what was most important to camera. So hopefully once that all gets done and we have data back, we'll regroup again, have an assessment of what that looks like. Um, they did promise some money towards this uh, infrastructure work. They don't have a lot. They have a lot, you know, it's a it's a back and forth thing. So we're we're trying to negotiate, you know, how much infrastructure work needs to get done. Um, if it's not too bad, maybe, you know, we could do some of the work um, that would be, you know, calming down the traffic and all. I, I just feel like we could either do the common now and not worry about the crosswalks, or we can do it all at once. So we really want to just pause and see what that infrastructure looks like. So that's kind of where we're at the moment. And, uh, you know, I'll report back when we have another meeting and get more data. So Thank that's you, that. You're welcome. Um, Let's see, we had a, uh, just other things that I've worked on. I've, I've met, um, we had a walkthrough of the church with the um, Board of Oversight for the seniors. Um, we did that the other morning and uh, just to get an evaluation of what the space looks like, what it needs, that kind of thing. So I think the, the um, intention is that we would like to move forward with the feasibility study to look at would this be a possible place for it? How much would it cost to make it environmentally safe, structurally sound? We're already doing some of those other things, but um, they wouldn't commit until we kind of knew, and that makes sense. So we're, we're I think we're all have an agreement to move forward with a, with a plan to get that rolling. And I know Denise has been there at every meeting and working with us um, hard on that. So just wanted to report that too. Um, Anything, Tim, do you have anything? You yeah, want to so add? just to follow up on Trevor's comments about the church. Um, so yeah, the, the $75,000 feasibility grant money can now be started to start to be put to use. Um, and the uh, other members from the other towns said that they felt that they'd already voted for this. So there right. was just a miscommunication about whether the, the feasibility study, they're not going to commit to go there. Two other things. Um, briefly, uh, Chris Nolan and I are trying to uh, prod Hampshire Lumber about the Leary lot. Apparently, um, there's just been a slowdown uh, in one of the legal offices uh, responding to communications. So um, hopefully, um, Chris and the uh, current most active manager of Hampshire will you know, get us back on track. And finally, um, We've got in three requests for federal assistance for the 1888 building project. Uh, and uh, 
later on, I'm going to thank uh, Senator Comfort for her help in getting letters of support together. So that's it. Great. Thanks so much. Well, we've got um, we've got some time before Senator will be here. So do we want to um, do we want to just do, yeah? Or do, do you have any board of health stuff you want to talk about um, first, or then? It's, it's just that we're green this week on our alert level. Um, doesn't mean COVID's gone away, but it's certainly less than it was um, the last couple of weeks. So that's it's, great. It's it's feeling good. It's feeling good to be beyond this a bit. I know. Yep. So we're all set. Good. Good, good. Okay, so let's just uh, approve some minutes. We've got, uh, I'll make a motion, if everyone's read them, make a motion to approve the January 13th, 2021 minutes. I will second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, abstain. Thank you. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Great, and that was, let me just get to these so I can do it. So that was the 13th. That was... Great. And then uh, I'll make a motion to approve the January 19th, 2021 minutes. And I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Great. And then I'll make a motion to approve the January 27th, 2021 minutes. Oh, yes. Second. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I, I was like, I was, you said January. Yep. I, I was seeing Oh yeah, yep. that's okay. January okay. 22nd. Any further discussion? All no. those in favor? Tim Hilchie abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Right, and then I'll make a motion to approve the February 25th, 2021 minutes. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchie abstain. Thank you. Uh, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Right, and then... Uh, lastly, I'll make a motion to approve the March 15th, 2023 minutes. And I'll second, second that. It. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Thank you. Uh, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. There was one thing I wanted to just make sure I sent the message on. It was a little note that we had to get rid of, but I think maybe that was done. Let's look at these real quick. Yep, I think I think Chris fixed that. And there was one spot that I wanted to just look at this real quick. I think we're good. Yep. Okay. Great. Those are done. Um, do you want to start on old business and just work yeah, until another 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. We have a proposal to establish a climate resiliency stabilization fund. Um, I guess this was brought up at last meeting. Um, well, so. we uh, Tim and I felt it was important that you be part of the discussion. Okay. So um, we did not vote on this. And the proposal is to take the income from... Um, a new revenue source, which we were we were thinking of um, the solar array at the transfer station, mm -hmm. and say fifty percent or some number, some percentage of it, and it would go into, um, you know, um, our a, a climate resiliency stabilization fund that would fund some of our projects like open bottom culverts. You know, the matches. Mm -hmm. So we got to come up with the money. We don't have any yet. Right. And From we, either the set right road pilot or. Oh, I know. I know. But that's why it's easier to talk about it and think about it before. Right. My, but is it premature to do that if we don't have a funding? Source? My, my only thought on this was that I'm in favor of it because it makes sense to put money towards those programs. And I, although I'd really rather it go to an OPEB or something. I, I mean, there's so many needs. We can definitely do some talk about that. But uh, my, my thought was with town meeting coming up fairly quick, is it something we want to just talk about through the summer and do on fall and fall I, special well, town meeting? I mean, I'm not to like push okay, it off. Yeah, because but, I, but I think Casey is correct in the sense that, um, you know, why I don't think we can do a, you know, we can establish a fund, I think, without having You have can, it. but you can't do anything with it until you have a funding source. Right, until we have a funding source. So that was my question. If we don't have a funding source, does it make sense to wait until fall just because right. it, it 
gives more of a, a description if you have an actual thing. And then money. we could also take that time to establish kind of the percent that would go in, um, how what items that we would right. spend it on, you know, do a little bit more legwork on it. Take clarification, but we, you know, that we need to be replacing our culverts. Oh, no, no doubt. Size culverts through the MVP program, mm -hmm. or open bottom culverts through the MVP program, or just, yeah. and if we don't have the MVP funding, then it's 100% on us. Right, but and the idea, we could use that money towards the matches and right. stuff. Right, yeah. and whatever but, funding we get from either source. I mean, I'm only using makes culverts good because sense. we know we have 20 Hunt. plus culverts that we have to replace. Yeah. So we're talking several million dollars eventually. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're every opportunity or every storm, you know, Kevin is aware of what our problem areas are and he's keeping an eye on it. And if we, if there's any ability to get kind of grant funding, whether it's through NRCS or MVP mm -hmm. program or whatever, we, we do do that. Mm -hmm. So, but the, but no matter what program it is, whether it could be from 10%, like the emergency watershed protection money program at NRCS is 10%, yeah. or it's 40%, under MVP. Mm -hmm. So either way, we have to have a match. And the idea was to have yeah. match money available. Yeah. And it's different than capital. our capital, regular capital. Because right. There's so much competition for that. Right. Anyway. And, and the regular capital is, you know, planned. A lot right. of our culvert activity is a blowout, right. stuff like that. And it's emergency fix. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was my only question is we don't really have a funding source right now. Right. So you guys. So let me just, Tim. after Casey's done, I, I have some thoughts. Sure, go ahead. I think, she, I think she's done. Yep. Yeah, I mean, she's basically saying that we don't have a funding source now, so we shouldn't set up the fund. And I'm, I'm going to push back and say, we ought to set the fund up because when we do have a funding source, money can start flowing right into it. So it will, if we do it now, we won't have to do it later. And if we don't have to do it later, it'll be just one less thing that we don't have to do later that creates a problem of not getting anything done. I so think I, set it up with just as a vote as a select board, right? The stabilization fund? No, it has no, to go to town to meeting. meeting. It has to go to town meeting. Okay. My only thing is that to bring it to town meeting, we should have a funding source. Well, not not really. A we do have source. a funding source. Future revenue from I agree the solar field. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that completely. I think we we have an, a vision of where we get the funding for it, and it makes sense that that we would use that for that. I'm just wondering, should we have um, a policy on how it gets, you know, what percent gets funded, and and what uh, how we are going to spend it um, before we bring it to town meeting? Is all I don't I just didn't know if we should work on that policy before we have it done well we did have discussion about you know what size should it be it needs to be meaningful right so 50 percent of the revenue and 50 percent of the revenue you know could go somewhere else it could go to the general yeah. fund it could go to opeb it could go to you know mm -hmm. um and if we approve getting the funding set up maybe we do it with the understanding that we're gonna you know uh in the next two weeks come up with a list of you know what is the percentage you know, what does right. that actually need to be decided now i don't know that it does yeah, because um, we don't know when the solar solar field are going to be built on this, uh, you know, uh, former site. And, uh, you know, how, how many years have we been talking about that it's actually going to get built? <laughs> right. Yeah. So and the ones that are built, we still haven't got any money from. I know what you mean. They're not commissioned. I just didn't know if we needed to. I mean, it might be a question for, for others, but I just didn't know if it was made sense to do it in the fall when we had all that stuff figured out. But I, I'm yeah. agnostic on it, really. I, I don't. Yeah, and, and as to whether we bring it to the, the annual town meeting or not, I mean, we can vote to create a stabilization fund subject to approval at town meeting or special town meeting. Right. Then the decision's made, and then we just decide which one. Seems like yeah. the annual town meeting but uh, is already sort of full. Right. That's and true. maybe it does make sense to push it to the fall, uh, and that would give us time to flesh out what's the percentage, you know, what do we use the money for, um, matches, I think the idea is matches or payment of resiliency projects. Uh, you know, yes. use use money from a renewable energy source to fund things that are help make the town more resilient. Yeah, no, I I agree with you completely. So I'm I'm in favor of voting to establish one, and I, I agree. I think it 
we should take a couple of weeks and figure out is it annual that's pretty full already or move it to the to the fall and gives us a little more time to do that yeah and i think you've got a good idea there trevor that fall might make more sense mm -hmm. just to give time to mature the idea a little bit yeah yeah flush it out a bit but, but i definitely support doing it because it does make sense to take renewable energy money and put it towards resiliency so should we just make a motion that we we would like to uh, create a stabilization fund and uh, subject to you know additional information about size and mm -hmm. yeah. are you making that motion tim i am okay thank you i will second it okay so if i understand that right just because you're looking at me with fuzzy uh -huh. eyeballs what do you want me to do? <laughs> is that uh i guess the intention is to kind of uh create the um the intention of the motion was to create to establish a climate resiliency stabilization fund um, I think we get started on the planning and then maybe we regroup and say does it really need to be on spring or spring fall. or fall and I feel like I feel it's like it's more... not Tim no disrespect I feel like we need more information before we put it on a warrant yeah so let's let's put it on the fall agenda yeah I mean great I'm just saying the select board needs to just say we're going to create a stabilization fund subject to approval by town meeting. Right, and then it, we'll 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 flush out the rest later as time. Yeah, I think that makes sense, Tim. So I'll so you've seconded. Yeah, because I'll, I I think it's important to do this. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. And then. Um, Let's see. I'm just going to skip over the old Deerfield sewer pipe replacement real quick because I'll come back to that with a little more time to talk. Um, yeah, we have the decision for review for the Kaiser dog hearing. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read that. Um, Again, we um, they had it up for the last meeting. Oh, they did. Oh, great. Yeah, great. OK, good. I, I felt like we knew that it was important, so I wanted to make sure thank you. you uh, we're yep. able to vote on it. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm. I've been. I read it. I'm in favor of it. It seems accurate to me. Um, it seems accurate. Tim, were you? Uh, were you felt comfortable? Yep. Yeah. It's okay. it, You know. It's so, a. Um, Casey, what are we supposed to do with it? We're supposed. To, do we make a motion to approve it? Make a motion to approve it and sign at your convenience. Okay. And, uh, um, I will make that motion. Do we authorize uh, Casey to sign? Because it looks like you are the signature. Yeah. Okay. Do you yep. want to? Uh, you guys decide. Yeah. And then that motion to the authorized signs. Yep. Okay. So the motion is to uh, to approve it, sign it, and authorize Casey Warren to sign. And I'll second that. Thank you, Tim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yep. Um, so five minutes. Let's do the uh, transfer of um, the old Deerfield old ball, uh, ball records. records. Yeah. So I know that this has gone um, <laughs> round and around it has. multiple different ways to kind of do this, but it, it does everyone feel comfortable with the language that has been kind of worked out since? So um, we have not heard from PVMA's council on whether this. they're okay with it, whether they're okay. Okay. With it. But this was a discussion that was had after I talked to count our council. Yep. Um, they talked to Tim to clarify what what PVMA could do mm -hmm. because I didn't have all the right information in the first agreement. So okay. Tim conferred with Lisa and Ben Taylor, yeah. her, one of her assistants or associates, and they went back and revised the agreement, sent it back to Tim. And I have not heard okay. whether Donna, Mc, I think their council, whether their council has approved it or not. Right. I think I know who their council is, but it's, it's yep. Donna McNichol. It's Donna. Okay. And so that was the piece that we didn't have was, um, I, I spoke to him today. Council's approval. And and he, he was trying to get some information from Donna, but he felt comfortable with this. So, so we could approve it, it provide pending, pending final the final review yep. and approval. Do you want to do it that yeah, way? Yeah, I'd rather that. Yep. Yep. Because it looks good to um, me and it'd be great right. to get it and moving Tim, before it gets moldy right. down there. Tim and uh, uh, Peter Thomas is cleaning up the records. Oh. He's getting them ready. There's yeah. there's a couple things I wanted to talk about in this though. There's um, on page two of seven, the term of agreement. 
Um, I assume it'll be effective on whatever date everybody signs it, but the termination, um, unless terminated earlier by the termination provision, I don't know what date. Would we, we review we this just, every 10 we years just, or something? No, we were just going to, um, what we're doing is give, is depositing the record, Correct. but not giving them the Correct, records. they're still ours and we can take them back right. when that's it says cool. when we have space and all that. And and I, I, I think that's one of the things that, um, there was a question on is is the termination date, mm -hmm. and so I would say we should terminate mutual termination. This is written, right. yeah, a written, written agreement between both otherwise to terminate the agreement. Okay, okay, so that can get revised then, yeah. right? Okay, that's fine. The other area that I wanted to revise was um, an independent research product that uses the contents of these enumerated materials shall remain the sole. Uh, property of the researcher. So when they do their work, they keep obviously that. But a copy of any published research results, um, it says may be shared with the town if requested. I would just like to scratch may and put shall. So if we request it, shall means they have to give yes. it to us. Is that okay? Because um, they could just say no. Um, well, I mean, it, PVMA doesn't have any. No, control. this is this is for anybody else. I know who uses the material. But how would we? The reason why you say may and not uh, shall. You know, shall is because how? What? Who has the ability to follow up on the? My only thing is that if the town heard about it and saw it and wanted a copy of it, well, I, I mean, I guess we don't. Um, I mean that I guess it would be agreement if people came in to use the material. It's public material. Right. So most everybody that is, you know, historians that are doing research, they're going to publish it. <clears throat> it becomes public. So we could just take it. So we right, but we would it. want them to give it to us so we have that information. Yeah. And it's creating a new record. Well, no, but what we could say is um ask PVMA to um we could have some kind of like we asked for your published work or something and so have some little template form that would would when somebody did research that they give us that but yeah i don't know I was... the problem is there's no enforcement oh and i get that one of our parts yeah. we don't have mon money to go chase down people understood that published a book about yeah cattle in right Mayfield. right okay that's fine that's i was that's just thinking shall problem. would give us a little more ability to get it but fine i think anybody would be one i'm i hope i hope so yeah they're not going to share before they publish their paper it's just so. you know it's an enforcement that's thing. true they need to they need to do that first oh. um anything else anybody saw in here they wanted to change Tim, did you have any problems with it not really no and you know the only way that shall could probably be enforceable is um you know if you're and I don't know if it would be legal, is that uh, you can't use the records unless, as a researcher, unless you give us the finished product. And yeah, it sounds like good. they're public records, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So, I've been you know, I think cool. it's, it's, it's good. No, no I'm kidding. I, it's I, fine. I, know, but I, I just, I know, just saw I mean, it as an opportunity. No, absolutely. I, 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 I wish there were, I don't see why they wouldn't. Right. But, I'm sure they, yeah. they probably will. May is probably the best we can do. Okay, fine with me. I think legally, I think- May Entertain is... a motion to approve this pending council's review. Um, I will make that motion. I'll second it. Thank you, Tim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, the, all, all select board of the signatures. Yep, sign at our convenience, yep. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Perfect timing. <laughs> hey, Joe. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome. We have to warn you, you have to speak into the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a seat. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank so you. good to see you. So much. Nice. I'm so just, nice. I'm coming in from Ashburn Hat. Oh, wow. Well, that's a hall. I was like, okay, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the Boston and I went to Ash Ash Ashburn. Oh, nice. So nice. Here. Yeah, so but welcome. Take you, your, you, take your time. You timed it perfect. Yeah, I know. <laughs> perfect. It's a miracle. I'll tell Jared and Elena. 
You won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, we'll take your time settling in for sure. Well, thank and, you. Catch uh, your breath. Yeah, catch your breath. Well, thank you so much for coming. Oh, yeah. what a privilege. Yeah, it was so nice to see you on the, on the agenda. And yeah. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for twice in one week. Actually. Oh, I, <laughs> I first want to thank you for coming to, and help advocating for us on uh, and working with us with DOT this this week. That was really great to have you and, there and and coming to Deerfield when the governor and lieutenant governor came. Mm. I mean, really, you've been what it's wonderful to see you so much. It is wonder. I love Deerfield. So it's really a pleasure. Good. And I thought and that. Finally Finally, Joe, thank you for your help on the letters of support for the 1888 building. I know that was uh, in yeah. large part to your staff, so thank them too. I will. Hi, Tim. Tim, hey, how are you? In California. Tim. Yeah. Oh, vacation. that's wonderful. <laughs> and thank, well, thank you for your advocacy on the hybrid meetings because yes, Tim's in California. Is, <laughs> yeah. So the at, you know the hybrid meetings are a very big deal. Huge. So you guys are covering the whole agenda. I know, right? Well, just. Um, Thank you a bunch. So no, but I'll yeah, go ahead if you want to speak on anything. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll just say yeah. quickly just to catch us all up, and then Please. I think th those were among the things that I know we wanted to talk about plus yep. the libraries. Sure. Um, so, uh, and first, just let me thank Deerfield for all the work, um, the select board, of course, Casey, of course, your whole team. Um, really, really awesome um, to work with you, and thank your you. dedication to the town is so unbelievably clear. Um, so thank you. Um, so you know that I'm in my third term, fifth year, um, and you probably know that I am now chair of higher education, which is good, I think. I, I loved public health for two sessions, and the Senate president offered me an opportunity to go, although I could have stayed too, and, mm -hmm. um, but it felt good to try something new, Yeah. Um, although I do love the commitment and the work that we still have to finish, Carolyn, mm -hmm. um, for public health, but those, you know, local public health excellence grants it's huge. are going to keep it's coming. Huge. It's, um, it's, it's huge. I just want you to know it's been very successful for us. Yeah, I know. It's had an impact already. I'm so glad. I, you know, there is a problem, as you probably know, in the governor's budget. But I met today um, with Ways and Means. Uh, so Governor Healy, you know, she had to do some cut somewhere, but she cut it way down um, yeah. to an unworkable number, a five million. Uh, so we need twenty. So it'll be one of the things I work on in the fiscal year twenty four budget. Okay. Um, so my my heart is still, you know, we're <laughs> finishing that work. Um, but higher ed is a good chair. Uh, you know, clearly UMass and GCC are really important for our region. Yep. Uh, and it gives me an opportunity to to do that work. I'm also vice chair of agriculture um, with great. Natalie Blay on, as who's the other vice chair, and Ann Gobi, who's the Senate chair. So we have a lot of Western Mass in that committee. That's great. That's good for our farmers. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Um, and while we're on Natalie, let, just let me say, you know, oh. working with Natalie Blay is, yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Um, so she, I just couldn't ask for a better partner. Yep. Uh, and I think Deerfield, you know, the Deerfield is, I think it's better for Deerfield if Natalie and I love each other, which yes. we do, and work yes. closely, which we do. Great um, partnership. So thank you for returning Natalie. Yeah. Um, because she really is exemplary. Yeah. She's evil. Uh, absolutely. The the well, double teaming this stuff together. It's just, really good. We definitely feel protected and, and advocated for. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in addition to those committees, I'm now assistant vice chair of ways and means. Um, right. That plus, yeah. yeah, it's good. It's good. It's great. Um, you know, you should expect me to to advance, right? So that plus the fact that I've been named to Senate rules, um, and Senate rules was the place that I, the temporary committee, which is where I, I fought to keep meetings open. Yeah. For for Western Mass constituents to get to the state house virtually. Right. Um. Uh, you know, because it's both. It's both we have to remain open yep. so that our folks don't have to drive five hours right. and, you know, pay for parking and wait a hundred, you know, a long time yes. to testify. But also, of course, that municipal governments should have the flexibility you need and deserve. So it's both. Yeah. Those are both things. Um, I'm also, I asked to be named to economic development and I was uh, right. as a member and that's good, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know, the 91 corridor, the knowledge corridor is critical for our economy. Uh, so I'm excited to do that work. Good. Um, so that's where that's where I'm located now in committee positions. I'm also on racial justice, which I wanted to be on, um, and also on Senate global warming and climate change, which is more of an oversight board. Mm -hmm. um, and so coming into this session, 
you know, I'm watchdogging a number of things that Deerfield has helped me uh, be aware of. We need to pass mosquito legislation, Carolyn. Um, we wrote it, we introduced the bill, um, and we need to figure out the funding for regional mosquito districts like the one Deerfield has helped lead. Yeah. We have to pass the state um, action for local public health excellence that will actually enshrine this money. It'll make it very difficult to do what happened in H1. Right. Yes. And it'll also set some good standards, right? Um, standards that are meetable, that local public health folks say, yeah, we can do that with this kind of support. Yeah. And of course, there'll be a provision um, that if the state doesn't fund it, uh, you know, we can't expect it. So, right. you know, the subject to appropriation language that's so ubiquitous. Yeah. Um, Natalie and I filed a rural schools bill. And here, I just want to take my hat and tip it to her. Yeah. You know, she led this with Adam Hines last session. Of course, I was, you know, I, I wanted to be helpful, but really it's her leadership. Um, and so this session, we're very excited and we're looking at rural school funding, uh, which, you know, again, I had my meeting with Ways and Means today and that was top of my list. Thank you. Um, but we have to do more than that. Right. We have to look at special education funding. We have to look yeah. at regional school transportation. We have to look at the impact of charter schools. Yeah. All of these things, you know, are in the intersection. We also have to look, and this probably came out a little bit in the hearing at UMass. I chaired the, the education hearing at UMass, you know, the combined effort yield, what drives Deerfield's contribution. Right. Over time, the state, I, I don't think this was intended, but it has happened. The combined effort yield calculation has meant that our smaller towns are getting to that 100% of what mm -hmm. the state can says we can and should pay, but big dogs like Wellesley, Winchester, Cambridge, oh. they could pay one, two, three, seven, eight X more. Right. Because we're all capped at 82.5. Yes. So Deerfield goes, oh, I'm going to get to that 82.5 and you get there and you sacrifice a lot yes. to get there. Other communities are not sacrificing that much. Right. The other thing that's true is that because um, the state currently says 59% municipality, 41% state, that means that the communities that are struggling to get to that, what is a capped position, which for you is everything you can do, but for Wellesley is not. Right. It means ultimately that you know, small towns are paying a disproportionate or having shouldering a disproportionate burden. This is not okay with yeah. me. So I did Thank raise you. this at the um, oversight, the Ways and Means hearing on the budget. And I'm excited. I met today with the Secretary of Education, Dr. Tutwiler, who is right. a lovely human. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's he's he said in the hearing that he was hitting the ground learning, and that's true. Um, but you know, I raised it again with him. So yeah, I don't think it's a one size fits all fix right. for us because we're struggling with low enrollment, declining enrollment, yep. and the whole basket of, of what's needed for our schools. But I just wanted you to have a sense that that's, you know, work that I'm going to carry over. Thank you. Um, on that, yes, on that topic. Talk, talk, yeah. No, I talked to, um, to Darius today because I said, you know, Joe's coming in he, he just wanted to extend his, um, appreciation and thanks for all you do because i said oh natalie's uh joe's coming in to to you know to meet with us anything you wanted me to relay and he said she's doing an amazing job she knows more than anybody on 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 public education so uh wow. he, he I, just really wants to thank you for all your advocacy and all your work he's um, a great superintendent he's amazing and we're so yeah. thankful for him for sure he and, is uh, he is and actually you know um uh, one of the things that was raised and darius helped raise it was the you know, chapter uh, 766 schools, the special education schools and that 14% yep. hike. Yep. So, you know, um, to, to Darius and other superintendents credit, you know, um, they raised that, it got raised. I raised it at the hearing. The governor put in some money um, to help plug that hole, yep. but it doesn't work. You know, so it, the formula doesn't work for us yep. out here. Yep. So, you know, the superintendents like Darius are, you know, what we're trying to do when we went to Boston was to organize the um, school districts to get the $30 per student raised because our budget is about 70% of our, you know, the schools yeah. is school related costs for our town budget. And um, it's, it's, we, we don't really qualify for the rural poor aid. It, we're, we're like a little group that's falling through the cracks. 
yet it's becoming more and more of our budget. And it's so overwhelming because, you know, we're capped at two and a half percent. But when our school budgets, it's Darius is doing such an amazing job, but it's still six percent yeah. increase. And, and you know, so six percent of a seventy percent high. Yeah, it's it, real. It's, is, is more. I mean, so all that's meaning is that our municipal budget is, is shrinking, you know, shrinking when all our costs are skyrocketing because of the COVID in factor. Yeah, and no, it, it's, it's real, just Carolyn. It's incredible. So, I mean, we reached out to a couple of communities that came to our, you know, like our group meetings and stuff, but we're, we're trying to organize just like we did with the library state why in this tiny group to get this really to try to figure out how, how we can get that, how do we become in the formula more, more fair, uh, you know, cause we don't really know what it is. Although we get, well, this will be our third year, hopefully that we will get a waiver because it's based on, you know, your community wealth and our community wealth is, is distorted by the nonprofits who don't pay any tax right. and also by our zip code, which includes you know, a third of our South Deerfield zip code is Waitley address. So be, because I went to a meeting pre-COVID, I don't know, it was 2018 or 19, the, um, Skip Olmstead and myself found out about this change and we have been successful in getting a waiver. This, like I said, hopefully this will be in the third year, but it impacts us like $300,000. It's absolutely I mean, true. That's, that's for us, it's just an unbelievable amount of money. We're the 14th wealthiest zip code in the Commonwealth. And, and that's just not true. Right. So the one thing that Darius did want me to advocate for was that um, he's so grateful for the rural aid. And he was hoping in whatever work we do is to, if there was a, um, a guarantee of like next year you would get you could guarantee 50 percent or 25 percent or something because that rural aid that comes in we never know what it's going to be you the can't next budget on can't it. budget on it so he's spending it on certain things but he would love to be able to roll you know even if a small percentage of it into the budget but you never know what it's going to be year to year so it was like well if they could guarantee a 20 percent or a 50 percent or something like that each year you wouldn't get at least you'd get a certain percentage that you could budget on each year yeah. um you know and so then, you so you had some way to the other thing budget. that we you know and and i'm we're not begrudging kids choicing out per se but when they go to smith Voke, it's thirty two thousand dollars a kid just regular ed that we pay so we have five kids right we have, we just found out we have a potential for additional kids um we had two one is, I think, graduating, and the second one is not. So that pops our budget up from sixty-five thousand to one hundred sixty thousand. Just out and of the blue, just, and it's just, just an estimate because Desi hasn't put the tuition numbers out yet. So we wait for well, them. Well, based they on April first, right? Based yep. on last year's tuition, it was thirty-two thousand, and and this is so much money per child, you know, that we have to pay one hundred percent for. Yeah. I, we have to do a much better job at subsidizing vocational education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's critical. Um, it's a great education too. Uh, and it's a great not, education. Yeah. yeah. We're not, it's not like we're saying no, do no, it. No, no, no. Oh, I don't hear you saying that. Yeah. I hear you saying like, how do we, one, it has a, a per pupil. Issue. Oh, right. it's got, it's sort of a double whammy, right? It's got a per pupil impact yes. on the school, the district school, and then it's the expense. Um, to send the, the children, right. the students to right. Smith Book. My daughter's at Smith Book. I I love it. Yeah. But it's really it's a system problem. Um, yes. It's not a it's not a family like it's not a kid problem. Yeah. So right. I, it's right. not a town problem. It's a Correct. it's a state system problem. Yep. So thank I you. Totally get it. Um, I think that's important. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's just it's yeah. hard to balance the budget. Every year. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Um, so there's one thing here that Elena wrote to, wrote down about fulfilling the commitments in the Student Opportunity Act. And it's important to note that the governor did fully fund the SOA. Yep. Yep. Um, she funded it through general funds. Now, that's good because we initially, when the legislature said yes to the SOA, we thought it was going to have to sort of be, we were going to sort of catch up through the fair share amendment. And that was going to be in part 
what it was going to be used for. Yeah. But it's being funded right now through general, okay. um, the general fund. So that's why you don't see it in the fair share amendment. Got okay. it. So okay. the implementation, and that's the um, that's the increase in circuit breaker, putting the yep. transportation in. Although Good. again, we have to work out this pothole yep. um, to get us caught up uh, for the fourteen percent increase. Um, that's the charter school mitigation. Um, although I will tell you, we have to figure out again. This is not a family or kid no. problem. This is a system problem. Yeah, absolutely. We have to figure out a higher reimbursement or a longer lead time for charters. Yep. Um, so it's that is all in the Student Opportunity Act rollout. Okay. Um, in Great. the core fund. Great. That's wonderful. Okay. It is good. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't. I missed that. Thank you. No, no, but, we did. It's hard. It's hard to know. That's why. Uh, and again, this is H1, so it's the governor's budget. The sure. House will, you know, Natalie's working on the House budget. I'll work on the Senate budget. And so, you know, we'll we'll figure okay. it out. But in her budget, she does fully fund the Student Opportunity okay. Act in the core. And then she takes on early ed and higher ed um, with fair share. Okay. Okay. That's how she has yeah. done it. That's great. Um, you want me to keep working? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Of course. Um, the MVP program. Our, 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 the problem with the MVP program, we were we are either the first or one of the first towns that were certified. Right. And it was a $20 million pot of money. It was wonderful. Um, but now there's over 300 communities and it's still a $20 million pot. And it, you know, climate change is not going away. And it just... If if there could be some dedicated funding at, that was more realistic, um, you know, a like lot more million or two hundred million, some something like, um, you know, the transportation money, like Chapter ninety, that because this is these are projects that the, what's valuable about the MVP is it's tailored to each community Turn on flavoring lights priority, and and they okay. are. Um, Toy room, home theater, bedroom, the paper lights, and the light can strip. You, can you mute, Sean? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. So it's it's the MVP program is very effective because it's tailored to each community. Each community decides what is their. It's part of their hazardous mitigation mm -hmm. program. It's part of their you know co emergency culvert blowouts. Whatever happens. Um, in that community, it's it, it's up to the community to apply for the grant and then um, sure. match it. Um, but the problem is, it's just not enough money. So when you go to do a culvert replacement, like we have in the past, we've have done two culverts here in town um, under that program. Though it's fantastic, but it's five or six hundred thousand dollars. They don't give out five or six hundred thousand dollars because there's you know the program is so small. Now. So. I have to go look back. We we've certainly funded it more than twenty million. It got a lot of the ARPA money. You mentioned that the other um, morning. That. So, Representative Andrew down here, he said that he still has got twenty million, and that's it. I wonder if it's twenty million for this region. Oh, I let, you know what? Let me yeah. call Andrew. We'll find out. I'll find out. Okay. Are, okay. Is Deerfield readying an application? Yes. Yeah, we send in an application. Oh, you send it in. That's right. We the, Natalie we did the letter. Yep. letter. Yes. Right. Yep. Thank right, right. you. Right, I remember. Um, let me call Andrew, and I'll just okay. look at the budget numbers. Well, it just it sh should be you know climate change is more of an issue than ever before, and so it should be funded. I I completely I think it's actually one of the more important programs. Mm. Um, but it's very effective because it can be indi individual. Yeah, know, right. A lot like community. Chapter ninety. You yeah. know, you are the poster child yeah. for MVP. <laughs> we love it. You know, you've done it so well. Right. It's been great. Um, it's been really great. We've taken advantage of of being the first. Yeah. And that's why we've taken advantage of um, um, the healthy soils as well. Yeah. They're the first in the state. You can come to our program and win. Yeah. <laughs> win some stuff Are you for the your first yard. In the state. Yeah. Yeah, we're the first in the state. And we have we're launching our program on um, our first event, um, April eighth, two to four. So we're giving away um, books by Owen Wormser. We're giving away, um, he's going to speak. Uh, we're giving away consulting, um, backyard consulting. We're giving away plants and, um, you know, we're- Pollinating plants. And, yeah. Yeah, for pollination. 
great time. I'll take a flyer before I go. Yeah, please. You know, we did that healthy soils bill. That was one of the early yes. bills. I'm, yeah. on, I'm on that task force and I'm, we have a meeting on tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So hopefully we're, the state commission is moving forward on that. So cool. Great I'm going to try to come. That's Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then um, the campus project. Yes. Do you want to, or Tim? No, do you wanna, uh, Denise is Denise here. here. Yeah. Denise. Are you with us? Denise? Yes. <laughs> She's here. She might be. Yeah, I see you, Denise. Are you Let here? Text her. Oh. oh, she might it's be. Okay. We can do other yeah. things and then Denise yeah, can pop sure. on. Yeah, totally good. I'll, I'll text. Are you texting her? Yeah, she's okay. texting. Um, we had talked about Chapter 70, um, the circuit breaker. Um, we wanted to talk about the libraries. What did you yeah. think um, our chances of the library? So, um, and the minimum made... Uh, Increase per student to 100. I'm yep. totally behind. That's the, um, it was pilot payments, rural school aid, $100 minimum aid. Those were my top three today. Yep. Thank you. When I met with Senate Ways and Means, because they're Thank the you. things that are going to make the most difference that we can affect through this budget. We also yep. have to change the Chapter 90 formula. Mm, yes. Um, to be about miles and not what it is, Thank right? You. Thank you. So, and you know, the winter road program money, which, which was great and which you know, the whole delegation advocated for, yep. uh, you know, we need to bring some version of that back. Yeah. Um, so the library, so uh, this is where we are in the library and, you know, kudos to Deerfield uh, for working um, with Amherst so closely. So um, we know that initially, I don't think this is a surprise, it's a public meeting. We know initially that MBLC didn't necessarily see this as a, um, unprecedented what you're facing. I think the I think the communities unit uniting, frankly, and Tim, thank you um, for leading that with others from Deerfield and Tilton Library and all of you. Um, I do think that that helped. I do think legislators, have, you know, Natalie and Mindy are really engaged in the House. I'm engaged in the Senate, and I think having our colleagues also say to MBLC, well, I, you know, I think this is unprecedented. That the kind of inflation related hikes from the pandemic and supply shortages. Um, so MBLC did come back to, um, and I think Tim has seen this letter, uh, um, came back and said, okay, yeah, we understand. We're, we have an idea. And the idea actually, my understanding is it would work um, for the libraries about ways in which to apportion some extra money. Uh, it had a meeting about that. And, you know, this is, we are in a human space. There are some new MBLC commissioners. The staff of MBLC may think one thing, the commissioners are thinking another. So yes. we're still very much in a storming, forming, norming. Uh, yep. But I can tell you exactly what, where we are currently, which is that uh, the governor and lieutenant governor are engaged. They know about this. Um, the administration and finance folks um, that's the new ANF secretary, um, uh, Secretary Gorkowitz, who seems like a very decent man. Um, he wrote MBLC with some questions, you know, and wanted to know more. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and MBLC responded. And right now, ANF is looking at that. So today, actually, I met in my budget meeting. This was on my sheet uh, because it's so important to Deerfield, Amherst, and Orange, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, so I do know that our the Senate leadership was placing a call to ANF to say, right. what do you need here? Right. What's like, can, can we go with this program? Because MBLC is essentially offering um, to take current or the sort of future expenditures and pay it forward um, in ways that won't heal all of the overages, but will heal some of them. Yeah. And um, the communities together had come up with $26 million, um, which initially MBLC treated as, I think, a reasonable number. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we are. Uh, the administration and finance seem to indicate that, um, seem to indicate a need to understand the more timely nature of this. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do is talk to them about, you know, these libraries are hanging in the balance and yeah. 10 of them could go, could go. Um, if well, we don't get assurance. I was going to say, my concern is, you know, when it, we first reached out to Orange, I mean, they only defeated it, even though it was a huge, huge amount of money for them as a community. 
it was only defeated by 56 votes. And if, and I think they would re-vote it. They would, yeah. If, what if we they had. had additional money. Yeah. And, yeah. and it just, they need to know it. And, you know. Yeah. It's, but we also need to know it just from a, you know, um, impact point of view on our mm -hmm. budget. Without question. Yeah. Without question, the state MBLC, you know, it did take some, I, again, I think all credit to the communities who joined together. Yeah. I think you were stronger together. Um, but I, I do think MBLC, there was some time that MBLC needed to yeah. um, get under the weight of it this, shall like we the say. The last meeting yeah. that they, they under, finally understood that we weren't trying to change the program. This was in addition to money. And right. Senator Tarr, he did a good advocacy, you know. Speech. He was there, yeah. The Senate Democrats were in caucus, which is why Senate Democrat staff were on. Mm -hmm. But Bruce, being a, Repu a beautiful Republican, he yeah. was there. So it was good. We were we were all communicating by text. Great. So the trick about Senator Tarr, just to speak, uh, and the mm -hmm. senator knows this, I love Bruce very much. It seems very clear that the House and Senate want MBLC to pay for this in its own existing pot of money. So not take extra money and put it in, but to go from the money that MBLC has access to. It'll mean that not unlike MSBA, right? MSBA increased square footage costs, yeah. um, thank goodness, but it did actually trim back some other things to be able to do it. And I so MB, so what, Senator Tarr has this hope for a pothole account. Mm -hmm. And it's not insane. It's it's a good hope. I just, I don't see that as being as effective and getting done as saying to MS, uh, MBLC, all right, MBLC, you got 10 libraries in the pipeline. Maybe you have to slow the roll on the libraries that would come you into the pipeline. support that though? It didn't seem like they wanted to support that. That is what they're thinking. That's what they're, that's thinking, what they're coming around that's to? That's what they're coming around to. Okay. Okay. Um, they would much prefer Senator Tarr's idea. Oh, who would, oh yeah. Yeah. And and that's you know, that's like a little creative, just to be honest, that's a yeah. little creative tension because we've heard a pretty clear, like, yes, from leadership, yes, we'll help you. And you know, everything is hemorrhaging money. Yeah. Let's let's just take care okay. of this within the existing funding. There's plenty of funding if yeah. they would like MSBA did if they would make some other choices. Yeah. And the choices were not easy for MSBA. For sure. And they won't be easy for MBLC. Right. You know, the MSBA um, paused the accelerated repair program. Yeah. That wasn't easy. Right. Um, but it did help the square footage costs. So that's where we are. It's yep. never off my plate. I appreciate um, because that. Because this is so, so high. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and you are great advocates. Um, Thank you so much for that. So the special education circuit breaker, I think I said that Yep. That the money is proposed by Governor, our beautiful Governor Healy. Yep. The formula is really bad, bad, bad. Yep. So we're going to fix. We're going to have to fix that. I don't think that's going to move soon because we're so close to budgeting now, right. and because communities are are so upset at the thought that the money would go out as proposed, it would, just won't help us. Right. I think. I think it'll. My guess is it would get rolled into the fiscal year twenty four budget. Okay. But clearly she wants to do it. And I think that's awesome because yep. it's so clear that she heard the outcry during the Ways and Means hearing. So kudos to her. We just yep. have to figure out how to get it out the door. Sure. Um, uh, and then the short-term capital gains tax. What is, where did that come from? Did we know? I don't, that wasn't me. It wasn't me either. Okay. <laughs> so there was, a, I, I wanted some clarification on this. I, I think I understood it that, um, we went through and we had passed the fair share amendment and now um, the governor is suggesting adjusting things like raising the um, the uh, state tax estate tax to three million from one million and lowering short shorter term capital gains from 12 to five so in some way it's like okay we're going to take some money from wealthy people who probably are the people who, who have these short-term capital gains that they're going to get relief on and so you you raise fair share and you lower something else and is there anything left over? And I I don't know the answer to that. And so I'm just looking for guidance and ex, you know, packages, explanations. Yeah, her tax package is seven hundred million dollars. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. She paid for it in the budget. Um. So, but when we look at the so when we look at the budget, we see some problems. So, for example, police reform, 
mitigation money, right? Yeah. Chief Pajoric, we're here, his head yes. was explored, right? Yes. Um, the public health money, children's advocacy centers, um, yeah. the healthy incentives program are all wildly underfunded from my small purview. Mm -hmm. That's my, you know, yeah. you know, I'm I have 25 cities and towns, but right. I count a hundred million of funding that is was in fiscal year 23 that did not come into 24 for known programs. Okay. Like wow. known, known programs. Yeah. That's um, a lot. It's a lot. And I'm, you know, if I think to myself, I, you know, I have, I, I don't have a 360 degree view, but right. I can count that much just knowing the things that I have tracked for our people. Okay. Um, so I do think we're going to have to have a conversation about that tax package right. um, and figure out, you know, what we're able to do. Um, I do think we need some estate tax relief. I do. Mm -hmm. I think one yeah. million. Yeah. Today is well. not what one million was, you know, and that seems reasonable because it's it's right. not you know people aren't necessarily dying every week, you know. To it's it's not like the capital gains thing, which is every year a wealthy person could get benefit from this that an average person might not. If I'm understanding the capital gains component, um, estate taxes. Everybody's house has gone up. There's a, there's a shortage of housing, uh, and that's a major component for many people. Is the wealth is stored in their homes. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it makes sense for, for that, you know, um, generational and, relief. And, you know, farms especially get dinged. Yes, exactly. Tax, you know, and we think about elders and wealth transfer, you know, around, around, you know, race and ethnicity. Like we want to figure out how not to um, disproportionately burden that. Right. So yeah. thank you for raising that. Yeah, um, I see Denise is here. Yeah. So. Um, but I just wanted to bring up one thing that just just to throw it out there, um, one of these unfunded kind of things, the, the fire departments now, because of all the batteries and, you know, storages, our little fire departments now have to approve of all solar and, you know, all energy installations, solar paneling and stuff like that. And, you know, it's gonna, it's a huge burden on <laughs> Our small fire departments, you know, that's training that someone has to get so that they know what they're signing off on, that kind of thing. And it, it just apparently happened recently. Um, it came up in my Homeland Security meeting just yesterday. So I'm not sure 100 percent, but what what is covered, but it seems like it's all energy installations. In the can town. you send me that so I can yeah. look at I, it? I, 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 it was from the Northampton fire chief that I, Oh, chief yeah. Davin. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll call him and ask him to send it to you. Cause I, I asked him, I said, what's he, so his, the first month that I guess they actually hired someone in their department um, just to handle it. And the first month they had 45 applications and, it's fine for someone like Northampton that has, you know, a, a pretty, you know, um, well-staffed paid fire department, but the rest of us that have volunteer staffed fire departments, it's, yeah. Uh, I would love point. to see what the chief is looking at. Yeah. You're looking at, uh, I'll, I'll have him. I'll, I'll talk to him. Okay. Have him send it to you. Thank you. So Denise. Okay, so update. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was in heated backgammon game with my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> monitoring this. Yeah, so just to get you up to speed on CCI, I think I think the, the you know the cornerstone of what we're doing is the 1888 building, which you know, and and thank you again for the um, letters of support. And Tim Hilchie worked tirelessly on that application. I helped him out, but I I told him I was his support staff for that. Um, so <laughs> that's you, really. Yeah, you're welcome. But that's really the cornerstone of what we're doing. It's, you know, it's it's like dominoes. Once we get that done, then we can move people from town hall over into that building. We're also working on the 1821 building, which is the former church. And we just had a meeting. I think Trevor mentioned that earlier in the meeting um, to do a we're doing a feasibility study on that to see if that could be a permanent senior community center. So we did meet with Waitley and Sunderland and they're certainly open to the idea if that works out. So I think the feasibility study will determine that. Uh, the next thing we're waiting on, which I think we're supposed to hear in the month of March, we haven't heard yet, is the geothermal exchange that 
Um, once again, Tim was very instrumental in, in doing that, the geothermal exchange, nuts um, through a federal program. So if that works, that would be wonderful. That would really help us reduce our fossil fuel use. Um, let's see, um, I was just on a library meeting last night and you know, the change in the direction of the addition so that we can potentially put solar panels on to further reduce or reduce our um, energy consum consumption. Let's see what else. Um, I've got a meeting next, I think April 5th with complete neighborhoods. We do get funding through that, which is great. I mean, we don't have to do any work. <laughs> we, don't, um, we have, um, there's a company called VHB that will be coming out and they'll be checking out the campus and then meeting and then doing, um, getting community input as to what the town is really, you know, so that the, the community is aware of everything that's going on. So I think that'll be great. We also have um, some money that we did get, excuse me, through a grant through shared streets and spaces. And that's to put in crosswalks and also beacons to really slow down the traffic on North Main Street, which is horrible, especially in front of the school. And then Chief Pachorik just received a grant. Um, I forget where from, but that's specifically to put in front of um, Pleasant Street for the elementary kids and help the school crossing guard to further reduce, reduce that traffic, you know, the, the speed there, because there's a horrible curve there. So that's in progress. And yeah, I think that sort of sums it up. So there's a lot going on and we've got a lot of dedicated individuals who are working really hard on this. So it's it's really great. It's very exciting that um, yeah. the feasibility study, there was that 100,000 yes. year mark. Is that part of what's helping to fund this? No, no, no. We, we did get an additional $75,000 for the feasibility study. So the $100,000 will go directly into, into the, part of the renovation of the building. Okay. Yes. Yep. So yeah, and thank you a lot for that. Nearly enough. Thank you. What? Yeah. Community compact regional. Oh, perfect. For 75,000. That's perfect. And then we'll oh, and I'm, I'm sorry. One, one last yeah. thing. We are we are in the process. We um we did uh submit an expression of interest for once again for the no, this is for the 1821 for the church building, and that is for you know the complete renovation because we have to do um, a full asbestos removal, mold abatement. Um, we have to address the water infiltration in the basement and then structural issues. So we won't know that. I mean, the grants, final grant submittal will be in June and we won't know that until, I believe until October of next year. So at some point we will probably ask you for another letter of support for that. I mean, you really are the most Once prolific again. humans um, with your grant applications. It Good. is, it is, it. It is really quite amazing. Yeah. Thank you for that update. You're um, welcome. Thank, thank you. you for coming too. Yo, it's a privilege. It's a, it's a real privilege. And that, you know, um, I did have a question about uh, storm cleanup money. Mm. Did you, are you over in your snow removal? Ex yes. 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 We are. Can you send me those numbers? I sure. Can. You know, because we were looking at the, I mean, the July storm, I think Deerfield got from that yes. money that we were able to snag like 376000 or something. Huge. But, um, hugely helpful. It was good. I mean, we needed to do it. The, yes. We have at least a week's worth of um, chipping. chipping and oh. cleaning up. I mean, the amount so of that mean, like it fell. Yeah. I just... You want an estimate? Just yeah. an estimate. Definitely. I'm asking the Franklin County towns okay. because it, it's not the same as the July storm, right? You know that um, Natalie and Adam and I worked on. Yep. Um, so it's not the same, but right. it is. Uh, it was I, an unusual event. So. It was an unusual event, and Hilt I think we could make the case for the winter road money, yeah. the kind of winter road money. Right. Again, I the winter road money is like that's a misnomer, right? We should right. just change the chapter ninety. Yes. Formula. <laughs> you know, permanently, yep. but until then, right. God help us, yep. um, you know, understanding. So, you know, yeah. So I'm going to just collect, Great. you know, um, I was just in Ashburnham and they have, you know, they had 31 inches of snow. Absolutely. You and know, they're at 50,000 just for that storm. Yeah. Right. And so I want to show like, Hey, this is what these towns incurred. Right. Um, so Elena may send out a form actually, so you can just reply to the form. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sure. We just want to, we want to be able to say, Hey, look, it's about, you know, whatever, yeah. seven, 800, 900,000, just out here. Right. Um, for 
for that winter, for the cumulative winter, late yeah. winter storms. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I will ask the accountant to get me that yeah. information. That's great. Perfect. Kevin, Kevin has did a really good job of trying to collect numbers because yeah. we were on the fence whether to declare an emergency or not. You know, we didn't think it was going to be enough, so we, we didn't. Yeah. But right. But they do have a lot of chipping to do. I know that. I talked to him this week. Yeah. He's exhausted mm -hmm. from it. It's really yeah. bad. A lot of work. We've got probably about another two and a half weeks oh. worth of. Hello. Oh, Kevin, there Thank you go. Thank you, Kevin. We've got probably another two and a half weeks worth of shipping. And then then we still got for the complete takedowns. Um, very fortunately, you know, we've got that cartograph system that uh, Maya funded for us. And uh, it makes tracking extremely easy. Um, I can break it down by Maya. Um, or, uh, um, oh, God, I can't think of it. Uh, when, where's uh, state of Massachusetts emergency, that, that rate. Um, yep. It automatically changes over to that rate also. So it's it's a pretty decent program. So um, anything you're looking for information, the only problem I've got is it's not going to be complete for probably another three weeks. Right. And, and we can, we, that much money. yeah, we, we don't need it right away too, because it mm -hmm. will do the budget. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, it, I'm thinking like, like it was last year. Yeah. Well, uh, well last Kevin week. can give you an estimate. Yeah, yeah. estimates yeah. are fine. Yeah, I just need to give a little back of the envelope to the yep. governor and lieutenant governor yep. leadership to say, oh, you know what, guys? There was just a lot of trees down. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of branches and stuff. Great. I know I've overstayed. And We're unfortunately, so I know there's a great presentation. I have a call now, so at 7.15. So yep. I'm sorry okay. to not be able to stay. For Understood. The, but thank you. Yeah, coming. thank you for coming. Thank you. Really, thank really you, Joe. Great. We really appreciate it. You, Tim. We love you having you. Yes. Please come whenever you have. Yes. It, you know, I'm I really I want to get to every select board in this, you know. Yep. Um, so I think this is my eighth or something. Great. Um, so great. I, you know, I, I want to do these regularly. Just get on the list. We're so appreciative for it's sure. Good. It's good to catch up. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Yes, Thanks, take everybody. Care. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Great. Another one? Yeah. Uh do we have another one? There. Oh yeah, let's run that one over. Much better, Trevor. Yep. Right. <laughs> I don't want them. Thanks. Yes, come on up. Yeah, come on. Thanks. Yeah. Dave, thank you for coming too. Yeah. Great. It's so great to see you. I haven't seen you since for a while. <laughs> welcome, very uh, welcome. Good to have you here can today. I, this I is see, the actually I see Charlene there and Charlene. great it's presentation great. of our ad hoc uh, human rights committee. So, yes, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks and, for coming uh, and all your work. Yeah. So, and I think uh, Sean is here. Um, yep. I don't Charlene's know. Charlene's there. Yep. I don't know if Charlene is there. Yes, he yeah, is. Charlene. Top row. Hi, Charlene. Top row. Okay, Charlene. John. And I know that um, Grant couldn't make it. He has some other meetings. Okay. So, yeah. Lou's here. Great. All right. Perfect. So I'm just going to start with just uh, a little overview, but I think that you got our package. Yes. yes. Um, so we met for six weeks. Um, and we put together a package of some resources, some sample um, mission statements, and everything is is a sample for you to review. And just want to give you a little um, overview. Um, so Deborah Yaffe, I was a chairperson for the Ad Hoc um, Human Rights Committee, and we're here to share our recommendations um, for the formation of a Human Rights Committee in Deerfield. And really want to just commend the select board for moving ahead with this um, from, you know, our discussion around an anti-hate statement, which I noticed that the uh, senior, um, the senior housing committee is using. Yeah. Good. In their minutes. So well, we changed it just a dash. Yeah. We personalized it just a dash. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, anyway, we're. Uh, so I just want to kind of clarify. So when we're talking about human rights, um, we understand it to mean the right to equality, safety, and freedom, and a guarantee that human rights are exercised without discrimination of any kind based on race, sex, language, religion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status, such as disability, age, marital, and family status, 
sexual orientation and gender identity, health status, economic and social situation. Um, we also understand that the right to a healthy home, food, housing, work, education, information, and healthcare are integral parts of human rights. So as I said, we met for six weeks. Um, we researched town and city human rights commissions and committees in the Commonwealth, um, attending the Massachusetts Human Rights Council meetings, which you attended, Trevor and Tim. Um, and we, we were, had an opportunity to ask questions there, um, to kind of you know figure out how uh, different towns, whether the size, how everybody is um, sort of addressing you know the uh, open meeting rules and how you deal with confidentiality and things like that. And so during our meetings, we were able to compare different models um, from other towns and figure out what would work for our town. So based on the findings. Um, we thought that Deerfield could start with an advisory committee and uh, which would focus on advocacy and education. And there are a lot of larger towns in the Commonwealth um, with more resources and larger populations that use this model. One of the models that we, we gave you was um, No Place for Hate, which yeah, several that. towns, uh, Hull and Salem have adopted. It started out um, from the ADL and um, to use as a school model. And then they incorporated it under their cities and towns. Um, so we were thinking, given the size of our town, uh, we recommend starting with this focus of building connections with other entities, with community groups, which already mm -hmm. exist and are working on human rights. Um, it would be a good start, a good place to start and give the committee room and time to grow. An advisory committee would work with town committees that are already formed, community and school groups, such as the Regional Anti-Racism and Equity Committee, the Deerfield Inclusion Group, the Sunderland Human Rights Task Force, which a lot of people in Deerfield are involved in, and also with businesses in town to promote human rights. So at this time, um, we were in agreement that the committee should not mediate human rights complaints or violations. Um, we learned that other human rights commissions in the Commonwealth either have a lawyer or they have trained mediators or they're getting trained mediators just to as part of their uh, human rights um, commission or committee. A town human rights committee has limited authority. And what we learned is like the city of Northampton expressed their frustration. They've had a human rights uh, commission for some time since the 1990s. And they started by taking complaints, um, but as a city commission, they didn't really have enforcement authority. And it was not only ineffective, but it was frustrating for people who came to them and they were already feeling victimized. Mm -hmm. And then the commission, all the commission could do was write letters, ask landlords and businesses you know, to respond to complaints. And it was ineffective and it didn't have you know, much of a consequence. So the commission's charter is now um, clear and it says, you know, in Northampton to educate, convene, advocate, um, and advise, you know, the, the mayor and the city council on the promotion and protection of human rights in Northampton. So we we're thinking, you know, that that model would be a better fit for Deerfield. Uh, also, navigating what we heard was navigating the open meeting rules, as I was saying it's difficult to provide a safe place for people to talk who are already, you know, have experienced maybe some trauma. And um, yeah, so so that that is difficult uh, to negotiate. In terms of responding to civil rights complaints uh, or violations, um, Sergeant Jen, you know, Bartok is very versed. She's our civil rights officer. Yeah. And um, so she helped us sort of just navigate and shared a lot of information with we shared some with you about the difference between a complaint, a violation. And so she's she's there as a liaison and would be happy to serve um, in that capacity. Um, and in addition, we um, talked about some recommendations for people interested in serving on the committee. So I'm gonna let Sean Durrett maybe, she's here. 
move yep. to that part. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yes. we can. Thank you. Yeah, so first, um, a big thank you to Deborah for chairing this ad hoc committee and a thank you to the select board for having us up here um, before you tonight and also to all the other committee members. I believe unless Jen Bart Bartok is in the room, she is the only one who's not present at this meeting. And Grant, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Grant, you mentioned Grant. But, yeah, sorry. Um, so... We came up with um, one of the documents we provided was a sample of sort of a application process that the town could use if if they decide to go forward with um, starting an HRC, as Deborah just described, more of an advocacy and educational group. Um, so what that would look like is the town could put out a call for interested um, residents. They would need to be a resident of our town. And um, a document like that can be distributed. It would have the mission and the purpose of the group very clearly stated. And um, it would help applicants understand or interested residents understand the function and purpose of the group. And those people should be ready to support the mission as it's described and have an interest in anti-discrimination and anti-racist work. Because diversity and inclusion are really important elements of um, a human rights commission or committee, we would encourage residents from underrepresented communities to apply. And those who are interested should submit a letter of interest to, I'm assuming it would be the select board, if, if you decide to move forward with this group, who would be appointing those committee members. And they could explain in that letter or email their interest in serving on the Human Rights Committee, their background or experience in anti-discrimination and anti-racist work, as well as potentially how their lived experience would contribute to the work of the group. So we would definitely um, make it clear that one doesn't have to be an expert in this topic or have professional expertise, and that lived experience can be quite valuable in committee members. So someone who's living with a vision impairment or someone who's living with a mobility issue or someone who's from an, another underrepresented or minority group, be that racial um, or otherwise. So having that diversity represented as much as possible in the committee members would also certainly be a goal in that call and then um, vetting those uh, interested letters of application, if you will. Um, and so you'll see that document also in the materials that we shared uh, just as a sample that could be modified should the town decide to move forward. Can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, I bounced into this meeting ID. Hang it was on. supposed to be the Deerfield Jonathan. Commission on Eagle Brook School. Jo Jonathan, oh, we're not take. Um, can you can you hold your question to the end of the presentation? Well, I'm just trying to figure out if this is the right meeting. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, this is the select board meeting for the town of Deerfield. It might be a, what what were you hunting for? Um, yeah, I got a registered letter from. Uh, the Town of Deerfield Conservation Commission oh. notice of a public hearing on a oh, building that yes. Tomor is that's tomorrow evening. That's tomorrow evening. Yeah, day early. Yep. Okay. <laughs> You're probably wondering said, why this doesn't sound like Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it says Wednesday? Yeah, it's um, Wednesday. Yeah. Trevor, I saw that I saw that item listed on tonight's agenda too. The Eagle Brook. Oh donation oh that was, is eagle Rook donation but he's doing a conservation uh a conservation oh, commission they're, they're thing building for, a new dining hall and it's burn a butter right yard yeah i'm uh, sorry yeah that's i'm sorry to no, out, barge in but no problem jonathan I'll duck right out of here Thank you're you. welcome <laughs> no. to stay yeah you're welcome to stay if you like but uh for sure <laughs> see you tomorrow thank you yeah yep. okay go ahead sean sorry about that um, that's it. I was actually at the end of what Deborah asked me to share just about a process that we would recommend okay. by which interested town residents could express their interest to the select board and serving on this committee. Okay, thank you very much. 
No. Okay. So I don't know if anybody else, um, if you have any questions or, I mean, we could go through a little bit more of the materials, but if you have some questions, you want to dialogue or David or Charlene, if you want to add in anything. I, I would love to hear from everybody. If, it, if anyone wants yeah. to pipe in on. Sure. Yeah. I'll go. Okay. Um, I'm Hannah Yaffe. I was on the ad hoc committee for six weeks and of course i just want to i just want to stress should the select board should you decide to go ahead with um this committee i want to stress that when you choose members um who will advise you on matters of concerning human rights that you pick that you really do your best to pick people who have lived experience so i'm i'm you know, advocating for what Sean already said, but yep. people who come to the table with a really profound learned knowledge of being different in this world that puts so much emphasis on being fitting at the mold. Um, yeah. It's really, really important. Okay. And I just I want that. to say that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for mentioning Indeed. that again. Okay. Um, you know, we've had some pretty good conversations on the, this and um, one of the problems that really came to light is there's a number of issues that happen within the town of Deerfield that people don't know who to go to. Mm. Um, you know, I know Casey is because of yes. being yes. on the board. Yep. And, you know, um, there came up, you know, the, the privacy, uh, everything. Um, yeah. So uh, the people were nervous about that. And you know, we explained about executive sessions and things like that. Yeah. Um, one advantage of the ad hoc committee is there would be possibly five members. So that means two members could talk and not violate the, the open meeting law. Yeah. Which is important. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a confidentiality that names can't be discussed and things like that because of the violations of law. Mm -hmm. So I think um, they are coming up with a very strong footprint and, mm -hmm. um, you know, even with the cases that came before the town when I was on the select board, uh, we had a difficult time handling them. Right. And because we didn't have all the investigative pieces put in place. Right. And I found, you know, that we were in some cases really overburdening Casey on it because mm -hmm. of the fact that she had, you know, this pile and then right. we threw this pile on top of yeah. it. Yeah. And those are just the two smallest piles. So um, having a committee and it's just liaison, and with you know, that. this ad hoc committee could serve a lot. And part of it is also serving an educational component to mm -hmm. things within the town yeah. um, and not just, it's a proactive approach and not a reactive approach. And, and that's what I'm, I have to say, I'm absolutely thrilled with that because that was what I was really concerned about. We just didn't even have a venue to be more proactive. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gone to, you know, Tim now and, and, but us before we had gone to, you know, different um, workshops and different, you know, venues where we had learned about stuff, but we had no ability as Dave knows um, we had no ability to really institute it because our town is so little and we don't have any money right. and everything was, you know, everything that they wanted to do sounded wonderful, but we just, how do we make it work? So mm -hmm. I'm, I was so thrilled that you, you know, came up with this kind of approach and, mm -hmm. and to be, have an educational proactive, mm -hmm. this is, you know, and, and, and just stay current. When I, when I first started doing um, like emergency uh, response, you know, in our town, when mm -hmm. I first was a select board, the, what, how you named your vulnerable groups and then how you named them a couple of years later, and then a few more years later, and, and now, it has totally changed. Just the vocabulary, trying to stay current with the vocabulary, it's not that we are trying to be offensive, it's just, we don't, we, we don't even know, you mm -hmm. know? So it, having a resource, making this a resource is important too. Thank you. I'm sorry. To Lou, Lou you, had a, you had your hand up for a bit, if you, oh, unless, well, well, I was going to ask if Charlene wanted to add anything I'm since she was a member of the committee. Oh, okay, Charlene sure. Too. 
I was. Yes. I was just waiting for David to finish. Um, oh, okay. Well, there were a few things that, uh, in my mind, were very helpful uh, to our group, and and I would say a healthy discussion. Uh, we we had some discussions where there was somewhat some differences of opinion, but we always looked for clarification. Um, one example would be uh, when we had a lot of debate about whether we should whether this type of committee should embrace hearing uh, information about complaints that might exist in the community. And one of the discussion points we had is, how do you authenticate that? How do you verify that that complaint actually happened? Um, because we all know that sometimes complaints are fabricated and some people you know, uh, have problems because of that. So, because of that discussion that we had, that's when we decided, is this the direction the committee should go in as far as trying to accept complaints uh, and do something about it? And educating the public was a far better approach to making sure people understood what human rights were all about. So that to me was a very important turning point with our committee. A second point that is near and dear to my heart is civility at any meetings in the town. Um, I feel very strongly that all public meetings should uh, be meetings that people are totally comfortable to give a difference of opinion in. And I think we've had times in the town of Deerfield where that has not been true. And I, rather than get into specifics, I'd rather not, but uh, a, lot, a lot of people know when things went awry because there were differences of opinion. And I think if a human rights committee can emphasize and really uh, encourage respect for civility at all meetings, I think that would be paramount to making our town a, an even stronger town. So those were points that came out uh, that were effective to my understanding as a human, right, uh, a human rights participant. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Lou had her hand up too. Or anybody? Um, yeah. Thank Hello, you. I, I'm not a member of this ad hoc committee. Is it okay if I just make a oh, please, please do a question? And and I just want to thank everyone so much for all of the hard work and care that's gone into this process of you know figuring out what what would be the recommendation for Deerfield right now. Um, I guess one of my questions would be that as a um, as one of the primary roles of the of the commission, as as it suggested, would be to educate. Um, how would would there be some kind of um, I don't know. I guess protocol for people on the committee, as well as select board members, who would also, I'm sure, becoming potentially involved as you know the next level of. Um, seeking support in processes, um, just to, to making sure that people are getting appropriate professional and personal development for this role. I know some people are going to come in with a lot of personal lived experience, but it would be great to have uh, foundational um, equity and anti-racism educating for members to have some like unified um, educational experiences on how to how to to hold this role right. um and and you know just to be um something that would potentially unify members and be uniform language that everyone could be using while they you know bring their own personal expertise as well so i'm just wondering like could that be built into this is that you know not mm -hmm. only would this unit be educating town employees potentially select board and and other people in the town but they themselves would be getting an education Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great a great point, Lou, and 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 we really would need to have some line of of funding for you know for trainings. Mm -hmm. So it's something we'd need to look at, and how how could mm -hmm. we um, zero some money aside to to make sure, as you said, the people who would be doing the trainings have had some training themselves, other than just life experience. And mm -hmm. um, it's a great point, Lou. We we definitely need to look at that. Okay. Yeah, that's a great um, suggestion too. Of you know, I mean. Now, this is kind of a time for envisioning, right? So mm -hmm. what would this committee look like, an advisory committee? I mean, that they could actually, um, you know, host uh, 
forums or in <laughs> in the town and partner with the anti you know racist and equity um, committee and other groups. You know, so yeah, that would be great. I mean, it's, I think it's a great way of just thinking about this work of bringing different departments and businesses and um, yeah, community groups together. Mm -hmm. So, I just one like thing I would like to observe is that I, I I think that the the committee has shown a lot of wisdom in recognizing what they could potentially contribute to the town and what might be more problematic. And I think the suggestions that you made are all all things that we can achieve as a community so i just wanted to thank you for being reasonable on something that can seem a very large and challenging uh area to discuss so i thought it was a good job so thank yeah, you i do too i'd like to add just one thing it just happened a few weeks ago but the uh, the supreme court in its wisdom mm -hmm. said that Boards could not stop somebody from using abusive language because it infringed on their freedom of speech. That's true. I'm just asking as a citizen if we can get Lisa's office to kind of give us a decision on that. She did. Yeah, she, she did. already has. Yeah, okay. I can share it with you if you'd like. Yeah, yeah there, there's a, it's it's it, it scares me. It is scary. It, they can really say anything. Uh, it, it throws out our civility policy. It does yeah, we completely. So hard. So the yeah. Supreme Judicial Court settle the case we have an opinion from we have an opinion from council the supreme judicial court um settle the case council sent us an opinion but really what drives the bus on it is you can't you can't control what somebody says if it's an uncivil thing or abusive language the it's very difficult for committees mm -hmm. to say to somebody it's not that language is unacceptable. We right. really essentially what it says is you can't say that, right. which makes it difficult from a civility perspective it Does that we just listened to you guys talk about. So I, we did send that out to some of the committee chairs. Yeah, we should. Um, I can send, ask Chris whether. Send it out again. Yeah, yeah. I read about it in the New York Times. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 It's awful. Uh, it's just it's awful. very scary. Yeah. Charlene, you know, thank you. You brought this up as a discussion point, we spent several weeks kind of looking at this, talking about this, mm -hmm. you know, that as a human rights ad hoc, as our limited committee, we were modeling, you know, well, what is this like to talk? We don't all agree. We don't agree right. all the time, but we're going to listen. We're going to respect. So Charlene wrote um, a civility. I said, well, why don't you work on, you know, writing a few lines to pass on to the select board. And then I kind of added something. And so we came up with, you know, for the human rights committee, we unequivocally condemn racism, discrimination, hate in all its forms. And we commit to working diligently to ensure that our town is welcoming and safe for everyone. As we embark on this work together, we realize strong emotions may arise. We commit to civil discourse, using our words thoughtfully, listening to one another with care, and in this way, showing mutual respect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can't control everything. And, right. you know, yeah. we also discussed that when you're talking about racism, you're talking about hate, strong feelings come up. You have to kind of yeah. you have to be able to tolerate. Right. Um, but I think you can also create a culture. You know, it takes right. some times, but create a culture where. This is what we're doing here. We're we're practicing, you know, That's right. listening and um, hearing each other out. And but yeah, so thanks for bringing that up, Charlene. Yeah, but it's is important. And uh, no, is it a violation of the two minute rule of public comment that we had in place before to keep that in place? No. no. Uh, so you you can, you can uh, boards can decide not to have any public comment. We, it's not required by law unless it's a hearing or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but at a general meeting like this, select board, we could choose to have no public comment at all, ever. And mm -hmm. I don't agree with that policy. And I and I did a small presentation for the MMA about how that policy came to be and um, shared with, I think there was two or 200 people or so on the call. And it was about you know, where that came from and why we think it's important to have public comment and why we think it's important to have it at the beginning of the meeting so people can feel like their voice is heard 
um, on any of the topics that are there. And then the, the main thing, it takes discipline on our part and would also be in this case that anybody can say anything they want. It's up to us not to engage that mm -hmm. and, and, and give it any airtime, give it any legitimate, you know, people can be rude and say anything they want and that's their prerogative. But, but as you model that, as, as we do this, um, you know, respectfulness with each other, it, it, it you know, over some short time, I think it will just show how much of an outlier that behavior is and that the, the general public does not really condone it and doesn't engage in it. And where we don't have law on our hands to say that's not allowed, mm -hmm. we can show that it's not acceptable and it's not our participation. But You can show, which is what you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Deborah, mm -hmm. is showing Absolutely. the leadership of trying to be that civil group. And it's on, it's up to all of us. We're still learning. We're all learning how mm -hmm. to navigate in this. Sure. And now with that SJC decision, it, it puts even more of the onus on the committees mm -hmm. to interact in a civil manner to model that behavior, mm -hmm. right? Be That's what I think yeah. I heard yeah. Yeah. both say. Yep. Okay. That's true. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any, if anybody else wants to say anything, comment, if if uh, any of the select board members have any questions or I thoughts. I felt it was a great presentation. I read, you know, everything that you put out. I feel like it's um, it's an excellent uh, path forward at, and it gives you room to grow and all of us to learn how we would use, um, you know, how we interact with the committee. And I think it's really smart to engage, um, you know, know when, okay, this needs to go to to Jen, who's our liaison, mm -hmm. and it, it, that's a safe environment to speak and um, and lodge a complaint or talk about a violation or anything like that. And it's not a kind of a public meeting thing. So that really made sense. I think everything you put in here really it hit the nail on the head and it feels really good. And, and Lou is right. We do need to have some training for people and we did some and we need to do more. And so we really need to look at that in a budget with no money. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're looking to cut. We got to find ways that this is important, and how do we, uh, how do we find ways to make sure that we support that? And we train the people that would do the trainings and all that, and and engage with other there, with with the wealth of knowledge that you put in here and resources. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be people here that can help us along that path too. With like, yes, we don't have a huge budget, but this is so important to their work that they're willing to come and do some training for us and that kind of thing. Oh, they're definitely you know, allies yeah. around. And, yeah. you know, I know Circle we, we met with um, the head of uh, diversity, equity, inclusion at in Amherst. And so she, she has yep. some ideas about yes. funding and, and then the Massachusetts human rights council is a great resource because yes. it's, it's people from all over the Commonwealth who have, you know, started committees and commissions and, you know, once a month, I mean, it's really, it's a good meeting. There so, is a, um, I think the woman from Amherst also, she approached me at MMA Pamela? when okay. I spoke, because um, I stood up and spoke at that presentation where the two gentlemen spoke about their lived experiences. And and I kind of asked questions. So I'm like, we, we're trying to do this here. How do you do it with no money? And he's like, you're on, the, you're on the right path. You guys are starting and you're talking about it. And then she came up to me after that presentation and say, hey, we're here to help. And, you oh, know, good. so I think that was yeah. really great. So. Yeah. so from a select board standpoint, it sounds like, um, you know, you've given us a lot of good actionable information and, you know, I think we're all in agreement that, and, a, you know, a committee along the lines that you're suggesting is something that we want to pursue. Do we as a board want to, you know, take this information, read it again, because I confess yeah. to um, have done it five or six days ago and then come up with an action plan that we would present at a, another meeting, whether it's, yes. whether it's the next one or we are in budget season. So, but keep being mindful that we want to move on this quickly. Yes. Um, what do you suggest, Trevor? No, I agree. I think, I think we, we, you know, consume all of this again um, and, and come up with an action plan in the next, uh, next meeting or the meeting right after. I know there's a lot of budget stuff going on, but we can carve out a little bit of time to really act on these recommendations and get this ball moving and at least get the um, 
applications coming in again that people, you know, put, put that out, advertise it so people can um, learn about it and give some time for enough people to hear about it. Yes. In, in community well, communities that don't always pay attention to this stuff and mm -hmm. reach deep, as you talked about, getting those shared experiences to what, what I'd like to do is to have a timeline that we have, um, that would cycle in with our normal appointments mm -hmm. so that we could set this up. You Makes know, sense. Yeah. Uh, July 1st to, to June 30th kind of mm -hmm. cycle, like with our re regular appointments. Will that so give enough had, time? So we, so in that time frame, we, we work out, we work backwards. So in other words, our mid June meeting, we are, you know, we're appointing and then what's the step, the next, you know, the step back from Eight, that is, yeah. is, you know, we've, we've, um, have look over the candidates or yep. whatever we've advertised we in the papers and, and and choose people before then mm -hmm. make sure that we have a good representation and then i mean starting now we could advertise mm -hmm. that this is what you know we are going to look for a committee i think yeah. i mean i think i feel like there's consensus without us actually taking a vote I right think there's consensus that yeah. the recommendations we all love the recommendations or are yeah. or appreciative of the recommendations. So, you know, we would say that we're looking for a committee. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can post that at least on the website and put it out on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the application process looks good. I, you know, I yeah. went and, through that pretty well and it, it looks Yeah, well and we gave you out. kind of a list of right. how to doing some outreach to diverse communities yes. or just sending that email and, I wonder if there's a way that we could, um, yeah, so that we give you three months mm -hmm. to do some outreach and gather those applications right, and right. Go through a pro instead mm -hmm. of our process. Yeah, um, and then uh, and in that time frame, I don't know yeah. if the group still wants to kind of meet or discuss or stay together to kind of. I know the bounce state, some ideas the state off. has training. Like I, I, I'm on the state commission, so I've have mandated. Um, inclusion training, mm -hmm. equity training, and because of the the public health excellent grant, that you know one of the things that you're supposed to do is do the equity and inclusion training. Mm -hmm. So that I've signed up for that training. So the the state has training already. I I you know so maybe we can get access to the. That's what we need to find out. Yeah. Is yeah. How we get access to that? That's right because. It's under Mass Achieve. Remember, the, we're always getting all those emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's ma under Mass Achieve. You have these modules that you do the training. I'm 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 taking that next week, and then the following week is the public health one. There's two different mm -hmm. trainings. So, but they're being pushed out by the state. So we should, as a town, have or municipality. Have access to those trainings. Yeah, let's let's find that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, let's investigate. So, as individuals, persons could take that training. I think we would have to check and see. Yeah, yeah. let's yeah. do that. That's that's part that of the planning around yeah. this is what I was thinking. Yeah, so we could we could we could check some of those resources. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, we could check with some of the other communities that have you know that have been mentioned by you. And I feel like this committee should stay together yeah. until until we until we appoint an official. Mm. Yeah, I just hate I'm to not see sure it if result. we can do that. No, um, just because. Yeah, I, I don't know because I think we've moved on. Several of us have other commitments. Understood. Um, That's so. fine. Yeah, if you don't. But I wonder if um, you know maybe Chris Chris Nolan. I just kind of want to give a shout out. Uh, it has been very helpful. Thank you for all your service and helping us move along. I mean, maybe there's a way if this comes up at another meeting, mm -hmm. you know, could we be notified about it? Um, That's what I was thinking. Yeah. If there's, you know, still some touch base with, if we had to reach mm -hmm. out with some questions in, in the meantime. Not, yeah. Can I just say, um, I think one of the resources on the list is, or should be Stavros Center for Independent Living yeah, we put it on in there. Amherst. And I do yes. think, I mean, they used to um, do educationals okay. about people with various disabilities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, and they would be, um, and I know I know the executive director. So okay. uh, Angelina Ramirez. Yes, um, number here. Yep. Yeah, she would be 
Okay. Because what, what you want to do when you form these committees or you have people apply, you, they need to know what um, the commitment is. And so the commitment, we need to make it clear as a select board, one of the commitments would be that you would do training because I think that is one of the good, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that is a good suggestion. That's what I would yes. want yeah. us to be pushing would be at least some basic training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because you're supposed to be giving us advice and guiding us. So, you know, there would be some follow up, I hope, with on that. Yeah. And so Sean had her hand up. I'm not sure if she still oh, has something I to say. See. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I didn't see it either. That's okay. Um, just very quickly. I mean, it is true what Deborah said that um, this ad hoc group, you know, may need to disband now in terms of the time commitment that volunteers gave. Gotcha. But I I would be very happy, you know, if the select board, or I don't know if this is allowed or how it would work. I just want to say, you know, I'm, I would be very happy if the select board reached out to us with ongoing questions, or if there is a way that okay. I, I guess I'll speak for myself, that I could be helpful. Um, feel free. That'd be great. That'd Excellent. Be great. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's, a, yeah. Yeah, I yeah just too. that kind of yes. thing. Just a, okay, perfect. I think Chris Larrabee has his hand up. No. Oh, oh. no. Nope. That's uh, somebody's. His hand's been up the whole meeting. Oh, no, okay. that's his, that's somebody's. Uh, oh, maybe that's, that's Chris's. His, uh, it's the cursor. Cursor. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> it. It does look like a hand up, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to talk to Chris tonight. No. All right. <laughs> oh, there's his thumb up. Good. <laughs> Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, well, thank you again for all your work, and we'll we'll circle back on this and get it on the uh, next agenda and, or the following. Yeah, I want to thank the select board. You know, yeah, this is important work, and it's it's Appreciate very it. exciting. Yeah. Um. That yeah, you're moving yeah. forward, and feels yeah. like we're in a good space. Yes. I like it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank all right. You. Have a great thank night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for your time, thank everyone. You all online. Appreciate Thanks, it. Too. Thank you. So we have a mountain of work to do tonight. So, okay, uh, we we did the- Just so I can put some context on this, I've probably got about 30 minutes before I have to bail. Oh, that's okay. That's okay, Tim. Oh, yep. Thank you for- We've got a commitment from all Tim, of us that we'll keep it short. Um, because you yep. have to leave, is there any, uh, the Weston and Sampson discussion, um, or so, is, is there anything yeah, I mean, in particular like to discuss? Basically, Weston and Sampson takes 30 seconds. Um, I've tried to BCC people on all the conversations around this. Yep. Uh, they came back with an offer, uh, a, a contract um, that Casey has and needs to run by council. Yep. That they would uh, do a, p a fairly detailed peer review of concepts about the Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant for the sum of $12,850. Um, the nonprofits asked, to see the contract, I gave them the information about what the contract asks Weston and Sampson to do because the contract is between the town and Weston and Sampson. And it really, the language of it really has nothing to do with what we're asking them to do. Yeah. So I haven't heard back from Matt. Um, okay. But I reiterated that, you know, we're not going to do anything until um, we get approval from them that this is an acceptable number. Um, and, you know, and also then uh, Casey and, and the legal team would work with Weston and Samson to put the contract into a, a form that we can use. Um, so okay. there's some work to do on it. All right. That's good enough. Thank you. So I will send it to council. Yeah. Uh, council's good. recommendation may be with their proposal to actually use our contract template. Right. And make adjustments in the language. Tim. Okay. So that may be the first thing that they ask me. I just, full disclosure, I want everybody to know that. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and the helpful piece from the nonprofits would be to say, yes, well, this is a reasonable sum. Um, and, and then we could move forward in good faith with, you know, knowing that they're going to support that number uh, would be helpful. Yes. Yep. Um. Okay, so while you're still here and before you leave, there's a, a letter of, um, um, let's see, a letter of request to the uh, Mass DOT based on our, our last meeting um, was to send a letter out 
requesting that the North North Main Street bridge, the dry bridge going over the railroad tracks be put on the bridge program and kind of gets the ball rolling for them to look at it. It's going to take years, but um, right. so I would entertain a motion to approve and each sign this letter as we can uh, when we have time and are in the office to put this on. Do we have a second? I, I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, to see if there's anything else here that needs. Um, there's a treehouse uh, brewing letter. There is a, oh, right, uh, Board of Selectmen. This is to Woodstock, Connecticut. Um, it looks, uh, are they looking to open up so down there? They're looking and... to open up in Woodstock and they requested a letter of support. Okay. Um, what Chris and I did was we sent their administrator um, an individual email from us that yep. basically explained our experience with Treehouse. Okay. This would formalize a letter of support for that Woodstock, Connecticut okay. um, Treehouse build yeah. out. They've been great neighbors and yeah good neighbors yep i have no um, I issue doing no that regulatory issues right any um okay so i entertain a motion to send a letter of support i will make that motion any and i'll second it okay thank you tim all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye great um gonna hang on to the weston and samson one and then there's this um and we already voted the storage uh store town records just pending the pending review council's review so i can um let's see Trevor. yeah tim can i ask you a question yes since you're away would you authorize us to use to your use with stamp yes yeah okay for your signature on these letters Great. yes okay thank you do we sign this in both spots? There's like two areas. There's town of Deerfield and then agreed and authorized by the select board. That's a good question. I did catch that. I'll sign yeah. both. It's the case. <laughs> I mean, it looks like there's a spot for that's Pontic what Valley. I for. That's yeah. So okay. Great. I think that's it for signatures for now. So that's great. Um okay. Thank you, Tim. Any, no, nothing sure. else that needs our, our action as a group? I don't think so. Uh, well, just to hit on a couple of things, we're going to um, accept a gift from Eagle Brook. Um, the Quinaki Family Trust is um, a property on North Hillside that is uh, 76 North Hillside Road that is transferring. Um, they're having a sale and the land that's in APR is just tr staying in APR. And we're just acting on, we're not acting on our first right. Uh, right. Or, to, yeah, so, and I, I support that. It's a family transfer. Okay. It makes perfect yep. sense. That's perfect. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Do you um, do we do, do you want his stamp on that too, or does it well, need to be? What you should do. So we don't have the language for this. Sixty one A is different from APR. I actually asked a question of council because I can't get an answer from anybody, I even know. up over at APR, the state. Um, we need specific language for that right of first refusal. So my question is, if the board is in support of this, and it seems by consensus it is. It is. Um, would the board authorize me to finalize a letter yes. for the property, the seller and the owner to use as part of their yeah, sale the documentation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, it just, we need the right language. So I make a motion to um, approve Casey Warren to work with um, town council to produce a letter notifying the uh, seller and, and buyer that the town of Deerfield will not exercise its person purchase option for 76 North Hillside Road. And I will second that. Any further discussion? And sign at your convenience. <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, you know, we should do this all the time, Tim. You should just pretend like you're leaving the meeting and we'll get through our stuff like that. Hey, Casey, and I authorize you, Casey, until March 30th, anything that I, of course, if you consult me, but you can yeah. use my stamp on anything that needs my signature until all right. Okay, Sounds thanks, good. Steve. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. Um, what about the old Deerfield pipe replacement? Uh, the old Deerfield pipe replacement, let me hit on this really quick. So um, we have been um notified of a of a monetary gift 
to be able to replace the pipe. And we, we have done this, uh, nonprofits have given a, a gift um, a couple of years ago to, to replace some piping leading from Little River Road, I think it's called, down Little to Meadow. the Little Meadow Road, down to the um, down to the sewage treatment plant in the Old Deerfield that's in pretty bad shape. We used that money, it was gifted to us. We went out to bid and used the money to, to fix the pipe and pave the road. Um, they authorized additional money to do that, but um, not authorizing the engineering part of that. Um, and there is engineer. Last time they did. This time they're not authorizing the engineering portion of that. So they have a, a sum of money, but we then now need to raise uh, and appropriate, um, you know, eighty thousand bucks or so to do all the engineering for that work. And uh, we do not have that at the moment. Would have to go through a vote from town meeting, or we'd have to see if we have enough money in engineering somewhere in our budget to make that happen. So. Normally, last time we were able to just move ahead with it and get it done. This time, it, it creates a lot more uh, of a headache because we don't have any uh, funding set aside to do that project. Unless it's in the budget, right, Kevin? Right. And I don't know if we have that much in the budget to make that happen between I would, now I would, and then. Um, I would recommend putting it off to the fall town meeting to um, once our free cash is certified, we would be able to determine whether we could afford the engineering. Well, it's sewer. Yeah. It's sewer, which means it's part of the enterprise front, Carolyn. Right. right. But it still depends on whether we have what our free cash certification is for the enterprise fund. Retained earnings. Retained, so earnings. retained earnings. If we have enough retained earnings to do the work. Okay. Uh, do we have any idea what that is at the current moment? Uh, no, in no, but I don't write right now, but I can get that answer for you, Tim. To figure oh, out. I was just curious because it does seem like a logical thing to try and move ahead on. I don't know if the timing of this during the during the summer is better for everybody it is. involved, or it is. And it is. my other question would be, um, where did the eighty thousand figure come for engineering? Is that something oh, you've had discussions with someone? Yeah. So we, uh, as we did last time, um, DP <laughs> put put together a kind of a rough estimate on what the bid would cost for the project, and in Part of that is the engineering work to do all the pipe work, but the engineering the of, the, of, of the pipe work and put the bid together and manage the bid and all of that stuff. Um, and, and so the total project was like $546,000. And so we were thinking, well, we could do a portion of it. We Maybe we can't do all of it, or maybe the bids come in less and we can do it all. Um, but with the engineering not being a part of it, 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 it creates an area where now we have to go out and raise the money for the for the engineering portion of the work where we didn't have to last time. So um, that that just kind of put a put the brakes on it a little bit. And everybody wants to get it done this summer when kids are gone. Uh, Kevin, go ahead. Yeah, um, my question is, and obviously we'd have to talk to Brenda, making sure that, you know, we're getting not getting ourselves in trouble. But, you know, um, I, I, I can look at what I have left over for monies in in my existing whole budget as a whole not just by line item right and then in depending on what there is left over at the end maybe we can utilize that and if i have to ask for a, a second bill july 2nd and that way i'm already into my next fiscal year and then i'll have more money again so i i, I think we might be able to pull this off i think i don't think we're going to be able to get the water main in um right. that's not going to be cheap right um, there was the other issue. But we might, we, I, I believe if I work with Brenda, I think we can work this through and, and working with DPC because I mean, realistically, the, the rate that they're, they're leaving right now is the same rate that they offered uh, in 21. So they, right. you know, they're still sticking to that same number, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, I, I don't have everything in front of me, but um, as soon as I do, I can, you know, we can discuss this. And so I'd like to ask a silly question of, of Kevin and, Sure. And uh, I don't know exactly where the uh, where the asphalt would work would commence uh, from Little Meadow Road. Is there any any way that maybe um, either you know you could not do the final paving? In other words, use hard hard pack or something to create a surface that you could still use until you find out about the water main. So well, they're they're not planning on paving that. This that, will that, all okay. be 
that, that money is dirt just dirt strictly on. to replace the pipe and, and leave it a dirt right road. but you're gonna are you gonna do it in an ask a currently paved space no no okay no it's not so there's no, no. there's no road impact that's correct. correct. It's just correct. a dirt dirt road impact. Yep. And then there's like another three hundred thousand for this water main, or roughly, or ballpark. You know, but I, I could be off on that. You know, again, you know, yeah. I don't want to commit to a number, um, but I I will get a solid number on that. Mm -hmm. um, Deerfield yeah. Academy is is extending their pipe over by the um, by the scoreboard, so that way when we have the opportunity to go ahead and put it in, we've got something to hook into instead of having to try and go up the road again. Yeah. Okay. They wrote. So, and, so they, they, they've already made a commitment that they would go ahead and they would basically bring us water over there. Mm -hmm. One it's, final it's, question. And I think I know the good. answer, but um, to put the water main in, obviously you have to go down a certain depth. Correct. And is that something that the uh, DPW um, heavy can equipment lay, operators can, lay the can pipe actually afterwards? do themselves? We could probably lay the pipe, but we can't make the connections. Yeah. I mean, you'd hire somebody. Because of what it is. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we bring in something like EJP you could or do something backfilling, like that. You could do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Correct. That, that now that would be to... just going from the scoreboard to basically the bottom of the pavement at the bottom of the hill going into the plant. Where that water main goes in, how deep that water main is existing right now, I have no idea to be honest. Right. We'll have to look at that. So, so this is something that Eric Meals could look at while we're correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah, come up with all right. Yep. Okay. Thanks for keeping you a lot longer, but we'll we'll kind of keep working on this and and update you on where we where yeah, and we maybe up. we can pick it up again at the next meeting because it yep. does seem to make sense to try and take the money yep. and run with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I hate to ask this, but I I, I have to ask because to especially with Tim being here, um, I'd like to be able because we're talking about sewer. Um, we're coming up on the on the two week period of when uh, we're going to be losing our operator down at the wastewater treatment plants at operator and training. We already have somebody else um, mm -hmm. in mind. Actually, it's the only applicant. Um, the the interview has already gone well. Um, it is actually it's Mac Lee, which which is the the one that's leaving. It's his brother. It's his older brother. Um, again, same thing. He'd be an operator in training, and I would like to because he seriously wants to make sure that he puts in a full two week notice to his employer, which I I applaud big time um that he's very adamant about that i would like to be able to see if we can go ahead and, and send him an offer uh let offer of employment um we're just replacing the person that was there and basically it's the same price because uh it's still an operator so it would be at the same same starting salary as mm -hmm. what you're recommending kevin correct um, the job was posted he's it gone was through posted. the interview okay, process good. so his recommendation is to high is to ask me to finalize offer paperwork and hiring paperwork i support that yep any anything else okay yeah um you need a vote it on sounds that? like a good as far as if, if casey's have been involved in a, is in, in favor yep. of doing this it's a great yep way to proceed you need, to. Take a vote. you need a vote okay we'll make a motion to approve um a hire a to casey to facilitate the hiring offer for the wastewater, for the wastewater treatment, treatment. Plant, uh, operator oh, and training candidate as recommended by kevin what she said and i will say yeah. what she said <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn s aye thank you thank you excellent thank you very much right. thanks everyone have a good night have a good thank you enjoy your time you, yep have a great time bye, bye. okay so we ripped through a lot of stuff there. Let's make sure we. So Kevin actually has, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, I'm Kevin. happy to. Have Kevin this. actually has a question about budgets. Okay. Um, and this, since he's here, is it okay if he asks that? If yeah. he talks yeah, to you guys about it? Because sure. we have two things on here. We have the budgets and then we have annual town meeting, but. He specifically asked if he could address this. And I believe Denise Mason also has a question about budgets. So be but before I ask you guys to do this, is there anything um, in the, the other items on the list that you want to get done right away? On this, you mean on, on your the agenda? agenda? On your discussion items. Uh, let's see. So we've done all the old business. The only thing, so... I, we could just knock out the gift uh, from Eagle Road. Yes. Okay. So just. Um, I make a motion. We accept the 
um, gift from Eagle Brook. Financial gift from Eagle Brook, Eagle Brook, and we're very grateful for it. So yes, thank you so much to, Just to uh, remind to Eagle Brook people and that the team there. The people they don't have to do anything. No, so I'm very very grateful for the help. No, and the gift is for money towards the elementary school roof yep. to pay down yep. that loan. That's great. Okay. Um, did we need a vote on that? No. 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 No, we just acknowledged yep, it. Yep, acknowledged, acknowledged it. it. Um, we are already cast a check, I'm not sure. Let's see the annual <laughs> town meeting. Um, no, I mean, we could move on with the other items and come back to them. I okay. Guess. Yep. Hey, Kevin. Hello. 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 Um, yeah, what I'd like to uh, discuss, if I can, uh, would be um, general highway payroll. Um, I'm okay. looking at, at Chris Miller, uh, assistant superintendent. Uh, Chris has stepped up well beyond where where he needed to be stepping up to, and he's and he's doing an absolute great job. Um, very supportive. He's he's helped me get get through so that way I can get through all these little special projects. Um, what I like what I like to propose. Um, he was supposed to be a grade F step seven uh, step six. Um, I like to request to go to a step seven. Um, which brings them up to forty dollars and eighty three cents, which is the next one on the uh, compensation schedule, which um, is a overall increase of uh, four hundred and twenty four dollars. And and how we're how we're funding that is um, we have taken our overtime hours and we've gone from two thirty five to two twenty. Uh, Brenda and I have sat down and, and we feel very comfortable we should be able to do that so that way we can absorb this in this existing budget um, and I'd like to really be able to support Chris because he has been more than supportive on anything that we've needed what he said <laughs> we have had this discussion the three of us have actually had this discussion too um I just want to say that uh the whole time that you were sick Kevin mm. Chris was extremely responsive um we had multiple meetings to get grants, um, budgets, budgets, and he was Maya, Maya stuff. Yeah, he he yeah he stepped right up to the plate, and and he was only with me. We were only together working for what like less than three months. Yes, you know be, before before the world got dumped into his lap. Um, and and like I said, and and he's continued to to continue marching forward and making sure stuff gets done and. And, you know, I, I personally believe I think our productivity has increased also. So um. so the element that I would like to add, Kevin, is the fact that this is allowing sort of the redistribution of work is allowing Kevin more time to deal with administrative mm -hmm. work, which is why we're able to go through some of these discussions um, that we have internally. You guys don't see them all, but this does give him some freedom to focus on some of these higher level questions that he has to address as the superintendent. I know uh, finance, uh, I think approved this budget already, so they'll have to take it back. Um, it's, a wash. it's just an it's a wash. Oh, because I know you adjusted some other stuff to to make that happen on some. I, I believe stuff. I believe if I'm correct, it's it, it, it I it would have to go back to them because it is yeah. a $424 difference. Right. Above, <coughs> above and beyond uh, oh, reducing my overtime. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I, and I made that. We vote it in the yes, we can. Meeting tomorrow night. Yep. Correct. Okay. Uh, but I, I was just looking for the support of, of the board. So that way, when we have our meeting tomorrow night in the. Uh... I will make a motion to support this. Okay. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Uh, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Kevin, I just um, had one. Thank question. you very much. Thank you. Um, that I meant to ask you last time. Um, the uh, uh, bundled notice of intent. How mm -hmm. how are we? Uh, are you moving forward on that at all? Yeah, as soon as uh, I mean, I got to wait for things to dry out a little bit. I, you know, we can't get into where we need to right now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but the bundled NOI basically basically what that does is is it, that it's not a free reign by any means. I have to go and let Concom know exactly where I'm going, what I'm doing, and everything else. So they have to have a list of of my work. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be kind of hit and miss in the beginning because we may have some areas that dry out a little bit and we're going to be looking at some roadside, you know, I really love the old Brooklyn roadsides. Um, I, I, just, I just wanted to make sure that if we, if you started that, that we were, um, 
making the appropriate documentation to the Conservation Commission? Correct. On yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, there's a total um, transparency here. You know, I'm not trying to pull anything. You know, hey, this is where I'm going. No, this is no, what no, I'm no. doing. And there isn't, there I mean. isn't that many models. This is like only this third community. Yeah, third one and third one in the state. Yeah, because Chris is the one that first started it, and then and then I picked up on it for a while through through uh, cheaper Turk. Yeah. Do um, and do you have plans for sidewalks in the spring? Yes, uh, yes, we do. Actually, I got bids getting ready to come out here fairly shortly. Um, what I'm looking at, again, depending on how far I can go, I'm asking for basically from Conway Street all the way north, both sides, east and west. Um, okay. the, the west side would stop at the school. Um, the east side would go all the way to the um, Jackson Road. Uh, Jackson Road. Yep. Again, that would that would be the the town, technically us, highway. We would be removing the materials, getting yep. it out of the way. Um, and then the company would come in for final grading, uh, right. doing what they need to do and pay it. Yep. Okay. I don't know how far it, I've got $250,000, which was allotted. Um, I don't know how far $250,000. Yep. We'll see, see how far we can make it. That would be, that would be where we're at there. You know, again, you know, there's nothing I can really do on Sugarloaf street because that does not yep. belong to us. And then we but do, we are, I'm also looking at obviously, you know, from the corner, um, right there at the senior center in, 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 in towards town hall. I mean, that just yep. completely fell apart this year. I, yep. Exactly. Pavement, pavement completely blew apart this year because this warm, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold pavement never had a chance to do it. And, and you get in there with the heavy equipment and just. Right. So, yeah, so we and got then, a lot. And then we should look at South Bain as well, a little bit like in front of the Polish right. club and yep. Yep. Exactly. Not, just whatever we can do to get cleaned up. I'm what I'm seriously thinking there is probably going in and putting in a small carving. I was going to say not, that not a granite curb, you know, it'll right. be, it'll, be a, it'll, it'll be a gentle, gentle slope. Um, uh, Cape Cod, yep, what I'm thinking, Cape Cod berm, um, that way, but it does, it'll do actually somebody goes in there to park, they'll actually feel the difference of the vehicle moving. So then that we they'll know that they're on technically the side, yep, yep. I'm okay. not in favor of Jersey barriers or anything else because that would just make life right, harder. yeah, Heck. okay, that's great. Thank you for that, appreciate it. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anything else you got? Is there anything oh, else you have? Oh, I've always got a ton of stuff. Um, at, at some point, and I don't know if it was actually put into your um, into your packet or not. Uh, and if you didn't, it's my fault because I didn't get it to Chris in time. Um, Laurel Hill Cemetery, um, they've got a, a nice website. And, and I'm looking at what they do. And uh, their burial costs are $800 and selling for $350. Yep. Um, when the burial actually happens, Two hundred dollars actually goes to their association. Besides the digging of the of the um, the grave, I'm looking at revenue stream. Um, presently, right now, anything that we got to do with the cemeteries is is basically being funded by the single fund of Pine Nook. Um, again. Just something to look at. Nothing you're gonna do right away. Um, but I think you should look at look at it. I mean, there's some really crazy prices here, um, just up in Greenfield area. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't want you know I don't want to outprice it. But the other side of the coin is, is we need some type of a revenue stream to to be able to continue buying lawnmowers and stuff like that because that's what ninety percent of my equipment you know the lawn mowing is yeah. being done at the cemetery. And the actual work for the care yeah. and maintenance. No, so it makes sense. Kevin and Brenda and I have talked about this. Yeah, I know. And the so. suggestion was increase the cost for permits. Right. And opening opening graves, right, Kev? Correct. Yeah. Um, to offset the the costs that are increasing for us yeah. to do that work. No, I'm just I know you. I, I don't have any problem, uh, but it's easier to raise the price once. So, mm -hmm. um, if you could give us, um, you, you you have you have a complete packet that is is it gives you anything from arms, cavalry, North Street, Holy Name of Jesus, whatever up there. Buckland, East Leverett, Montague, Millers, Greenfield, Colerain. No, 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 I meant from. These are all their prices, whether they open a burial, a full burial, wintertime, summertime, cremation, summertime, wintertime. Yeah, but uh, I what was is thinking, what I we're was saying is that you. What you wanted to set up, we, you know, I don't, I don't have those numbers here, but. Right. I would be interested in is what your actual, you know, Recommendation is going to be in the in the end. If you have to spend, you know, five thousand dollars for a lawnmower every ten years, 
12,000, 15,000, 12,000, yeah. whatever, then that's what I want you to incorporate into the price. Yeah, understood. And, and, you know, if it costs whatever it costs, yeah. and then have a 10%, you know, a reserve amount, and then we raise the price and then we don't have to worry about it for three or four years or five years. Yeah. I, no, mean, I mean, we haven't raised people the that put this stuff together time. at Laurel Hill, they did a beautiful job. I mean, the website looks absolutely phenomenal. A lot of great information in there. The rules and regulations are in there. Um, but we just need to remember that Laurel Hill Cemetery, it granted it's part of the old Deerfield Cemetery Association, but technically that cemetery belongs to the town. Yes. Right. So, so oh, when you actually look at Chris, all the paperwork, Chris Harris probably has something to do with it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's like I said, it's 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 great. I think they did a fantastic job. You know, the all the um, the members um, that put it together. Uh, I think it's a nice job. I yeah, like to so, say. Um, I saw I'll just say one thing. Is I'm not, I'm not going to get into details. We can talk about this. We have been raising the price at Laurel Hill. It was uh, arbitrarily too low. Yeah. Um, but we've been trying to balance because, um, you know, because it's only accessible to residents or descendants of Deerfield residents. So that limits as to what we can do with plots up there right now. So there's lots to discuss on Laurel Hill. And so I won't take up time now, but um, Kevin, hear you and I'll read everything and report back to the executive committee of the Old Deerfield Cemetery Association. And we'll see if we can do anything. Um, sure. Right now, on an operating basis, they lose money every year. We yeah. had a cemetery association. It's only through special donations and mm -hmm. some returns on some assets they have in, in stocks and bonds that we right. actually keep cash positive up there. Right. I analyzed their financials for the last several years and reported back to them and said, you've never made money, really, believe it right. or not. And so we need to do something different. And that's that's why we've um, you know, probably we'll go to 501 C3 mm -hmm. on that association up there and try to raise real capital money. Sure. No, it makes perfect sense. You know, cause like I said, I mean, the next town over, I mean, you got, if, if you do a summer full burial, it's a thousand dollars and that, 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 that's not that thousand dollars goes to the town. That doesn't include the $800 that they paid for the plot. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, there, we just want to make sure that we're covering our costs and, you right. know. Well, I don't think you're ever going to cover your costs. I mean, because it would be it would be extremely cost. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, Let me find out. Yeah. Well, we, by the easiest way. But, um, I, you know, I actually, I mean, picking Chris's brain, too. So we should raise the price, but I would like it based on some numbers that yeah oh, certainly yep no know, we don't want to that we are actually incurring costs on maybe right. an average exactly. metric up um, yeah. on this. like yeah. i said i'm not i'm not sure if the paperwork made it to you guys if it, if it did that's great like i said just just look at it at some point in time that way it gives okay. you a real quick idea on on some of the other pricing the next town over and, and surrounding so all right uh, you know we need to look out for ourselves yeah on. anything else other than that, I think I'm good. I, I've taken okay. way more of your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have, uh, um, I'm just going to go through. Well, Chris, Chris Harris is here. And um, one of the things on unanticipated, we could address that. So Chris, but can we, have... is Chris going to be here for the whole meeting or not? He oh, is. Okay. okay. So let me just get through my list here and then we'll, we'll hit I'm everything and get out of here. Okay, great. I, I didn't want to have your name. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, signature, signatory authorization on Comfort earmark for senior services. What yes. is that about? So that is actually the earmark contract that Jill mentioned earlier. It's yeah. the $100,000 that she secured for us. Yeah. Because we didn't have all the information from the BOO in terms of their support of this, we had not filed that contract. I okay. want the board to give me, if you're willing yes. to, the authorization to submit that contract and the yeah. the budget, yep, the basic budget. It. Okay. I just we had to wait until after that walkthrough. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion, and um, we'll support Casey to sign. And okay. I'm just moment. saying because yep. I'm around. Yep. Perfect. Not because I'm trying um, to. All those in favor? Uh, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, oh, you know what? We don't have to say that anymore because of Tim when Tim was, was here, yeah, but. Okay. It actually helps when people hear you. Yeah, speak. for sure. Yeah, okay. Annual uh, bikes fight cancer ride. So, so we got this 
we got a notation about this request a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The representatives from the police department are coordinating with the ride sponsors because that is a busy weekend. Well, I was going to say, why, why that weekend? Uh, that's the weekend that they actually, it's the same weekend they did last year. Oh, um, I just I don't know if we're going to have enough. I well, mean, there's so much happening that there's the parade the and all the other stuff. I sent a note out to actually maybe Chris did it. One of us sent a note out to the PD to see where we were on this. Right. Chris, okay. do you want to report back on that? Your conversation. Sure. So I had reached out to both Chief Pachorik and Sergeant Sokolowski about that. Um, and Adam specifically has been in contact with the coordinators of that event. Um, okay. And the last I heard, they've been informed they won't be able to use most of the streets in town after 2 p.m. Okay. That's when the parade starts. I think after 1 p.m. was actually right. the time they were given for enough of a cushion. Um, we were going to wait to hear back from them, but yeah. last I heard, uh, we should probably follow up with them in the near future because we want to yeah. make sure that we don't have conflicting events going on at the same time. Right, right, right. So we'll maybe put this so on the next did, agenda. We did want you guys to be aware of the fact yeah. that the uh, PD and Chris were following yeah, we, up. On okay. This. All right. Um, I think they were notified or, uh, prior at our last 350th. They, you know, the police had notified. Yeah, I thought Adam said he yeah. had done that, but I wasn't yeah. positive. He was really good. He told them that they had to be done prior to or move it, move okay. the final leg, one or the other. Okay. So that was what that was about. Okay. The uh the budget. So the let's so the two things that are key structures. is there were some changes that the board had discussed um at the last finance committee meeting. Changes to the select board ex uh payroll expense, the mm -hmm. expense budget, town office um expense. They were briefly discussed. Brenda brought this to me yesterday. So considered, considered changes were to decrease the planner's hours from 40 to 30 um, in the select board payroll budget. Mm -hmm. um, Finance committee actually wanted a better number for our expense account based on our spending. Um, and then for town office expense, we actually, Brenda and I had talked about it as well. We need to increase that because our publication costs and several other items in that budget should be increased. And one of those things, and I give credit where it's due to Pat Kroll, she reminded all of us that next year we'll be doing the annual report that will include the 350th celebration. So the mm -hmm. cost for that report is probably going to be much higher. Right. Because we have to capture pictures, the event descriptions, and people may want that report because it is a so high profile a year. Yeah. So we... So we made some changes. Work. What you see, and I sent it to Tim. Um, no, I didn't send it to Tim. I think I meant to send it to Tim. I scanned it, but didn't send it to him. Okay. But essentially, those are the increases that were discussed. Okay. Um, Finance Committee has a meeting tomorrow. They also have a meeting on Tuesday. Well, we should go through and vote these. I mean, you or, or voted a lot of your budgets. I know, but there's a lot I don't have any signatures on. Like, I didn't mark that we voted them. And they need to finalize this budget on on. I mean, they're going to look at the budget on Thursday, tomorrow. So. But they're also going to look at it on Tuesday. I think that's when we need to actually I, have We're not going to meet between now and then, are we? Um, well, we're, they're no, but we're posted. They're we are posted. So you want to vote them at their meeting instead? Well, he, here's my a thought. A couple of things. The thing that I want to say about the planner is I, I would like to keep it at 40 hours until we know that there's no choice to go down to 30. I don't want to... I don't want to go in tomorrow night with already deciding 30. Uh, I'm not in, I'm, I'm in favor of a full-time person. Right. Cause I think we're going to have less choice if we only have a 30 hour position. Yeah. You know, you don't even know what you're going to get. Right. Well, first off, it's a brand new position. So anybody that is applying understands that there is that possibility. It wouldn't be funded a second year if right. we weren't successful. Yeah. So there's not a lot of, uh, security in that and then if it's not if it's not even a full-time job so i'm not saying i would i would rather have a 30-hour planner than nobody right and nothing i know but I, I would like us to just hold off cutting the hours down to 30 until we know that we absolutely have to 
Well, that's the budget we'll have to deal with on town meeting floor right before we go to town meeting. So we'll we'll keep our budget for now and then. So you don't want to change later. it? No. Okay. Not yeah. So I need to not notify. Yet. Not yet. I know we don't have a choice in the end. Yeah, but let's. To balance it. Later. So I think this conversation will probably come up tomorrow and it may come up on Tuesday because really, I think there's some questions about finalizing what we can finalize and then going back and looking at what we may have to cut. Uh -huh. Right. We know that we, we know. Brenda and I had talked about it because I was trying to provide, you know, we thought maybe if we provided solutions, it would be easier for everybody to understand what we were trying to do and maintain what we I really just, need. I would really you like to go this, through these budgets. Cut. And I mean, we know we're being conscientious about what, what is the end result going to be, but I, 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 I want to start with just saying, well, let's try, let's keep it 40 hours right now. I would feel more comfortable if tonight, right now, we went through these budgets and just took okay. a vote on them, All right. just because I want my signature Sorry. on them that I've actually voted it before it gets to finance. All right. I, um, I can read them to you or um, yeah, the moderator. Um, these are simple oh, ones, no. but we voted those. We voted I have them. no signature on my pages that we voted them. We did that on them. The ones that the ones that still are not voted are. I don't. The, I signed every one that we voted, and those are not voted. Yeah, but the, you maybe. I think when you were on vacation, you missed some. No, I don't know that we did anything then, I but it, it, it doesn't hurt them. to take another vote. Um, Moderator, four hundred dollars. Um. Uh. Yes. I make a motion. Well, motion. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel. Chairman Ness. All right. Three, three, three. I know we voted that though, Kevin. All right. I now it's it written right down. Select board okay. salaries for sixteen thousand. We voted this already too, yes. right? Yes, we did. Maybe I got new sheets and somebody. What what we haven't done is. Um, Hang on, I'm just gonna. I'm zipping through them. Select board staff salaries. We we're gonna keep this. At, so you want to hold off on a vote until after? I I I don't want us to reduce it. No, I'm, we vote it right. We already voted it. You well, we did? take a vote just for okay. form's sake. Make but... a motion to approve staff sa uh, select board staff salaries at three hundred thirty nine thousand five hundred and eighty four dollars. Forty hours. It does. Okay, then yeah. I will second that. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Three, three. Okay, so, but make sure you put a note to yourself that. Oh, I know. We voted the forty hours. Yep, we absolutely. Yeah, yep. that's what that's he's signing as the forty okay. Yep. And then um, select select board administrator expense, which you've adjusted so based on. We made an adjustment stuff. actually at the request so, of finance committee. So this this is different. Yep. So. $15,950. And the reason why we Casey, upped we up added meetings to meetings, to meetings and to trainings, meetings. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then you added now money it's, for it's dues. From 5,000 to 7,000 meetings and training, is that going to be? Yep. It's a budget. The best we can do is estimate. Okay. What that would allow us to do is... Um, have a certain number of people go to the MMA conference, and that might include the planner. And, uh, yeah. One thing that I will suggest to the board members now is that we consider limiting what we're um, the number of nights that everybody stays. Yeah, that's Brenda fine. and I talked about that. So two nights, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, and then if, like for me, if I'm if I have an issue and I need to stay, yeah. I would pay for that myself. That makes sense. Um, it that. actually will cut the cost back a little bit so that we, we can get more two people there. Anyways, right? We always say Thursday. We go down Thursday. So, because the problem is, you have to be there. You can't check in, and you have and and we start meetings. You start meetings at eight o'clock in the morning on Friday. I know, but then you just stay until Saturday. So you oh. leave Saturday instead of saying oh. Sunday was the, right. the conversation. That yeah. Cause we got up Sunday and left. I know it was a late night, but still that makes sense to me. I don't know. Thursday, Friday, and then Friday, Saturday. It's, we'll address it, it later, but so at the least the money's in the gave, budget. We don't now. have to do this right this second, but that was kind of the thought. We both okay. Had. Make a motion to approve the select board yeah. administrator expense at uh, $15,950. Yes. I'm fine. All those that. in favor. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. All right. Okay, great. Um, 
finance committee is five hundred dollars. We did this one already. Yep. Three twenty. It's a town office expense. Is the one that's changed? That's the other one that's changed. Yeah. Reserve fund. Did we vote that already? I don't think we, we did. did vote it. And they actually said to us, and Brenda and I talked about it, but I think finance talked about it too. Um, our publishing costs have been increasingly. No re reserve fund. This no. is the reserve fund. Reserve fund is an article. No, it's an account. It is an account, but it's actually separately an article. Did we vote this already, though? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I asked if they felt like we needed to go up. Again accountant salary? Sense. Make a motion to approve accountant salary at $95,398. I'm, I'm second. That's, this included an increase in um, assistant town accountant. So it, it creates some assistance for mm -hmm. Brenda. Maybe some of these were done at the select board at the finance committee meeting. Accountant expense. At, I'll make a motion to approve accountant expense at seventeen thousand three fifty. I'll second. All those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I know we voted that one. I think so too. I'm writing these down because I just want to make sure. I just feel like this is like one of the most important things that we do is budget well, it's and sign off. And I just feel like it's important that it's a statute. If I don't have it written down, I feel like I didn't do it. Okay. Um, assessor's administration assistant salary uh, was um, make a motion to approve at $74,322. I, I will second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I, I remember voting that one too, Trevor. That's all right. No, that's fine. Thank you. I'm I'm okay. Just with make that. sure we it's done. Assessor's expense at eighteen thousand five hundred and twenty-five dollars. All those in favor? Um, Carolyn, that's I. Anyway, well, I I know this is torture for you. Those that night that the assessors presented. I don't know why I didn't write it down. Oh no, that's okay. I just want to make sure. I'm Trevor, I don't doesn't hurt to take a Assessor's second. quintennial certification. I just, I just don't want you to blame me for dragging this I'm not, out. No, I'm I want to just whip through these because I think it's important. Sorry. I wouldn't hound on it if I did. So you know I'd like to get out early. Um a second for a quintennial certification at twenty two thousand. Um I actually questioned that, yeah. but I will vote that amount. Right. Thank you. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Three. Um, that was the discussion on whether Patriot was the appropriate. Correct. Um, yep. Because they don't have a lot of boots on the ground. Right. And so that they're more not, software they're company, not, less of a boot. Right. Around. And they're not doing the work that they're supposed to do. And that's a contract management question that yes. assessors need to have. Yeah. A discussion I, mean, about. I felt like it's pretty serious. They're not reevaluating our properties mm -hmm. that's actually part of the contract and they're yeah. not going out and doing inspections and stuff like that mm -hmm. you're right i make the motion to approve that. the treasurer collector salaries at one hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and two dollars i second that all those in favor chair mcdaniel aye Carolyn, yes, and then um treasurer collector expense at thirty one thousand five forty the second second all those in favor? Jeremy McDaniel, aye. Going this way. Um, legal expense. We did not finish the vote. No, we did vote that. Did I we? think we voted 96? it, but take a vote anyway. All those in, uh, make a motion to approve legal expense at 96000 We did vote that because um, they at the finance. Know, we, okay. they wanted to know um, about you know, our ongoing litigation. Yes. McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, no, yes, aye. I never know if I pop up this. Okay, personnel board. Uh, I think we level funded that. Didn't yep, we? the seven hundred fifty. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, IT hardware is, was level funded, right? I remember yep. we voted that. Three twenty. Um, PEG access, we voted at four thousand. Well, that one was done. Um, contracted services. Did we ever finish that one? This one, uh, I'll make a motion to approve contracted services at. No, so no. we need to hold off on that because capital has to take some votes tomorrow night. Okay. And, that will affect and, that con and, that. And we budget. also pulled out because we were supporting the full-time planner. We pulled out 
some planning money. Yeah, that's what, yeah, it's assistance. down 21 percent. Yes. Okay, so let's hold on that. But um, CIPC needs to make a decision that impacts that budget. So town clerk salary, clerk we voted. Yep. Purchases. Town clerk expense at uh, 25575 uh, second. All those in favor, Trevor McDaniel. Carolyn Mass. Three, great, thank you. Um, Conservation Commission, we raised this. The reason why is because they're going to more meetings. Yep. And so, and they're fine. fine. And the and cost for them to do business are increasing. As well as mm -hmm. us, because I know that they're doing trainings through um, Mass Association of Conservation Commissions. Yep. I meet with. Which is what we want in that. Yeah, to do. no, it's, right. per it's perfect. I'm all good. Uh, uh, we, got, we got notice of certifications. Dottie sent me a notice of certification for people. And stuff. Do you have a second? Oh, yes. Yeah, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nelson. Great. Open space. We already voted that one. Because um, I think we went through the, the level fund budgets and the ones yeah, that planning, don't have a lot board, of contention. Yep, that one. Zoning board, we did that one. Agricultural, we did that one. Um, Energy committee, we did that one as well. Um, town building maintenance, we did vote. I've got written down, so that's done. Town office expense. Town is office expense changed. is the one that we went through. So you have a revised budget sheet there. We went through that, Brenda and the I. The only the only thing I I'm just, you know, fifteen hundred dollars doesn't seem like a lot. Increase. Well, why don't we take off the two thousand dollars for meeting room decor? We have to buy a rug. <laughs> we are still going to talk about what this looks like. <laughs> You could reduce that, but we definitely need so publications. Publications went up. That makes sense. I get and, that. Reports make and sense the reports to go up. All went all have to go up. Yep. Okay. Office supplies have gone up significantly. Paper costs in particular. Like we cut two thousand bucks, it'll feel good. All right. So let's no, let's split it. All right. Okay. I want I want an extra thousand dollars on the town reports and then we can cut it by a thousand dollars. Okay. And then we eliminate that line item. I'm sorry. So this six thousand. Yeah, let's get rid of it. You guys, you just okay. text, you yep. know, we're we're just based on we're doing yep. this based on past knowledge. Yep. I know. Okay. And it's so, a budget. So uh we're at fifteen five. I'm gonna okay. need to take a copy of that for Brenda. All right. So make a motion to approve the town office expense at fifteen thousand five hundred. Right. With the revised to it's sixteen thousand five hundred because you're putting I thought you said, oh uh, yes you're right you're right sorry yeah that's right town report I was trying to do funny math reduce it by a thousand okay make a motion to approve town office expense at sixteen thousand five hundred um second that all those in favor Trevor McDaniel aye Carolyn Ness aye that's a legitimate vote none yes. of the others were. <laughs> Uh, general insurance, make a motion to approve uh, general insurance at $65,520. I know this was a guess, it's a little bit too, but um, I will second that. Depending on if we that, to insure some other stuff. Yeah. And also, um, I'm not sure if that gives us, I, I think that in, it already incorporates our full credits. I don't know. I don't think it does. I think we, we may come down a little bit. Well, okay. what once we do we get is the we credits. do an estimate right. knowing that we're going to receive some credits. But right. It's a crapshoot. We never know. You exactly never know, how really. Much we're gonna get. I just want yep. you to know that we do, by going to the MMA and yeah. going to all those I meetings. 4,006. You can see the credits here. I, I told Brenda that. Yep. And I made a point when we talked about sort of what to reduce in the select board expense. I said that to her. When we it does when help. You say that you only that you're spending seven thousand, we we truly are going to constantly going to meeting, right? But then you do see forty five hundred dollars yes. or more, for, you know, right off of our insurance. Yes, we're going to those meetings. 
So, and it's not just the MMA meetings. There's other meetings that like John goes to, I go to, Kevin goes to. Uh, I don't have a plan for to. inspection department. Right, because now you're on their board. It's <laughs> inspection department expense at 4950 I have a select, I have a finance approved, but I don't have ours approved written down. Um, so let me see make, that. It's the inspection department. So level funded expense. Um, I don't think it was very controversial. I do remember this partner statement. I do remember that Maybe Brenda we didn't told me to talk about it. Yeah, I actually sorry. don't remember. Okay. Let's, I'll, let's uh, I'm, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'm, I'm sorry. I actually don't remember voting on that one. Um, we, I might have just gotten it, too. I don't know. Emergency management, uh, 2,800. I know they voted the other night, but I did not. Um, we didn't vote that. No. Um, I'll make a motion to approve at $2,800. And I will second that. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, S. I. I do not believe we voted that one either. Um, That's legitimate. Again. And canine, we did vote. Mm -hmm. We wrote that down. Um, we have not voted the school's budgets, and neither have they. Do we want to wait for I, Tim to do that at, at our meeting? Yes. Okay, let's do that. And and I'm you might want to wait until Tuesday for that yeah. conversation. Yeah. I, yeah. And also, you know, the waiver hasn't been approved. Right. So and Chris is going to follow up okay. on that. He and I talked about it yesterday. We, we actually sent an email. He so. did. We yep. did vote general highway I, expense. I, I think it's worth a phone call. We voted winter and snow. We voted street lighting. We did not vote transfer station expense because that changed, I think. Um, I make a motion to approve transfer station expense at $244,200. Um, I'll second that. All those in favor? Um, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. I, I, actually, I think we did vote that. I know, but I thought- I think there change? was a change to it, but don't quote me. Yeah. And Kevin's not here to ask. And then- um, we did vote test yes, well we monitoring, that, right? Yeah. Right. So then we had to explain why the erratic yep. changes. Yep. I remember I had to yep. explain that. Um, let's see. Board of Health expense. Did we vote that? Yes. We voted that actually. Wasn't it at not this last meeting, but the meeting? Yeah. Oh, no, it was two meetings, so. right two meetings ago. Two weeks ago. This is meetings. my book. <laughs> uh, it must be. Council on Aging, $500. We, we voted that too. It says it says it's true. <laughs> I know. Senior center expense. Uh, this was just approved last night. We voted it already, so we're good there. We're good there. They approved it last night too. Um, veteran district assessment. I don't have it written down, but um, make I don't a, know if you guys voted that. Make one. a motion to no, approve we did. Uh, the veteran district assessment at fourteen thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars. Um, second. All those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Uh, veterans benefits. Um, that's just a placeholder because we get reimbursed. Yeah, twenty-one. For that, so right? make a motion to we approve twenty-one hundred dollars, twenty-one thousand dollars. Um, I will second that. All those in favor? Yes. Carolyn McDaniel, aye. That varies. ADA coordinators, two hundred fifty bucks. We what? Did. Nothing. We did that. Um, but I'll vote it again. All right. Make the motion. Twenty-three. <laughs> How about if I look at Kevin when you look at me on the ADA? <laughs> uh, we did not vote Tilton Library no. or summer swim program or any of that. So. The, or, uh, oh no! The reason why we didn't do the swim program because we they just posted last night, and they just right, they just came to do it. So. Yeah. Um, they just did it Monday. Do we want to approve the Tilt Library yet or do that up with Tim on Tuesday? Well, let's do it on Tuesday. Tim. Um because yeah. they haven't come to do the finance committee. Right. Let's listen. Uh, yep. Yeah. Swimmer so program I'm good with. Uh yeah, approve that. Uh Ken made a good presentation. Yep. We'll make a motion to approve uh summer swim program at six thousand three hundred and ten dollars. Second that. All those in favor. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, yes, aye. Great. And then they did. And Tritown it. Beach, we did not vote Tritown Beach because we weren't right. posted either. Yep. So make um, a motion to approve Tritown Beach. Tritown Beach uh, at $41,022. Uh, and I'll second that. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, yes, aye. 
I, I know I was, that was a huge increase, but I know what they're doing and they're building. Right. And, and, and part it's of important. it, they have to do the permit no matter what. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Ken explained it. Yeah. The uh, recreation department. We haven't done Director yet. salary. Right. Do we want to wait for Tim on that? Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay. And then, ha she hasn't done the presentation yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think. The historical committee is a level funded. Um, Make a motion to approve for $1,175. Second. All those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'm sure we did that one too. Veterans Day Memorial Day. I don't remember doing that one. No, that hasn't been. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve for $2,000. Um, I will second that. And I just want to thank John Sis and the whole yes, committee for what they do. Yes, just outlined it with you. I haven't written it down for you. Is, 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 He's he, okay? is he okay with that budget? I think yeah. so. I don't it, it really hasn't changed much. It hasn't ever. Okay. And they he gets some donations. But yeah, I mean I feel like if anything and they, they do need an amazing some help. Mark. Yes, yes, they, they do. do. I, yeah. that's why I'm wondering if it was enough. I don't think we voted the FERCOG core assessment, did we? No, I don't okay. think you voted that. Make no. a motion to approve the FERCOG core assessment at forty two thousand two hundred and sixty four dollars. Um, I'll second that. All those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. Carolyn Nassai. Um, unfunded sick leave and vacation, ten thousand um, dollars. I know it's just also a placeholder. Yep. Um, so I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. Franklin County Retirement is um, make a motion to approve for six hundred and forty thousand three hundred and fifty-two dollars. I'm just asking if that um, does that mean. There was a, a a surcharge in there. Do we uh, be so we could catch up? Are we getting near the end of that surcharge? I actually don't know that, Carolyn. Let me ask Brenda because I can't remember. I know we talked about it earlier in the budget season, but I don't remember. I, I just wanted we'll just hold, I, I wanted to know, for my own information. I mean, we can still vote it. I mean, what are we going to do? It's yeah, it is what it is. Okay. Okay. all those in favor. Um. Carolyn, yes, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. But I want to say you... their timeline was like 30, 20, 30 or 20. No, I can't remember. So let me just... coming up. It's coming up pretty soon. Okay. I, let me it ask makes Brenda. a huge difference on our budget because mm -hmm. we had these ex double. It wasn't double. It was but... basically the OPEB costs catching yeah. up for OPEB right. costs. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, but it, it, was a, it was a short term catch up and I, I feel like it's let me ask Brenda because I can't remember a workman's comp went up quite a bit too it was 20 percent so. um you know what I want to hold on that too because you know it part of it is is based on your um experience mm -hmm. and I, I just want us to check our experience factor okay because otherwise you know you get like a surcharge the multiplier surcharge. We haven't had a surcharge in two years. And our unemployment but insurance. But the costs themselves, mm -hmm. we may have more claims. Our unemployment insurance, we have way down, like 50% down because it was much higher. We added some because we're, I think we're concerned. Oh, we paid off that thing. That's we why. paid off that. We yeah. paid off the old fees. It's level funded, but it's it's uh, it's actually down a little bit. But And we, it's actually a guess. I mean, we never really know. Right. I know. We so we'll make Fine. a motion to approve the unemployment insurance at twenty two thousand. Um, I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Um, group insurance town. Make a motion to approve group insurance for the town at three hundred and thirty eight thousand and seventy dollars. Um, I'll I'll approve that. Any I further? Mean, I'll, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Carolyn S. I. McDaniel I. I, it, I. The other question I just want you to check on that mm -hmm. is um, how, how, how many did we add from last year? Sarah it's talked about year. this at the meeting. Oh, when they did well, the it's four. Uh, so it's plans are up 6% across yeah. all plans for 2024, That's further for increase years. for possible four uh, new enrollees. Okay. So that's what it, basically the bulk of that increase is the six percent, but she does balance it with okay. possible hires. new people. Yep. All right. I just I just remember the. Percentage. I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, because the school was reducing some of their staff. 
in well, there. Yeah, but, uh, they're, they're we never under, we never know what they're going to do. I know. We've got to uh, make a motion to approve the school uh, group insurance at six hundred and fifty-two thousand seven hundred thirty-nine dollars. <sighs> Have a she second. Had the same reaction I did. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Talk about it a little bit. All those in favor? Deborah McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. I just, I just, I know. Again, it's I know. Um, Medicare insurance. Uh, make a motion to approve Medicare insurance one hundred one hundred eleven thousand one hundred fifty nine dollars. I will second that. There's not much we can do about no, that. No, it's up about seven and a half percent. All those in favor? Um, Carolyn S. I. Carolyn McDaniel, I. I think that's it. We've got um, the SCEMS budget which we have not voted yet. So you haven't voted you it, and we pay. received an email that there was a reduction. I would hold off on that. I'm going to hold off on that and same we, with the capital. We had a reduction in the um, overtime. I don't know. Okay. If that's I don't think we it's have the updated it, number yeah. because they haven't, it's they want to go back and look at it again. Yeah, no. Okay, let's hold on that. Right. Not the new, right. And then Brenda didn't print that out because we still need finance to talk about it. So we guys. have OPEB. Um, you know, I'm hesitant to vote that. Me too. It's, I just feel it's so low. It's it's not realistic. We we have a different finance committee. Um, oh, I need they a, need to take it more serious. So we can Bartholomew, just have a discussion. The lady from Bartholomew, I saw MMA, and she was going to come and do a presentation of finance and all of us on OPEP because I think it's important to do every year. So, so that's states. actually a funding stream that when you have I, revenues that uh, that are not... I shouldn't say unplanned, but when you yeah. have revenues that you have accessibility to, like the revenues from the solar field, if it ever goes in, that's actually something we could start putting toward OPEP. Frankly, I don't know that we have the money to make changes this year, but maybe we consider it after we you guys have a more firm discussion. I, I just want a, a discussion, and, and it, if we choose not to move forward with an additional amount, I want it acknowledged that we are kicking the can down the road. Yes. And that I don't, I'm not supportive of that. So we voted the sewer expense, but that has changed because we have upped by $50,000 the sludge. Right. But have we accounted for that in any of the other numbers? What do you mean? Uh, like the, the whole sewer enterprise fund. It has to be in the Warren article. No, I know, but I we so vote you, a sewer okay. enterprise fund, and then that includes our expense. It includes all your expenses. But then, so you. See I only it got the breakdown. one. Yeah, I only got the one up. So we have to update this one too, this page. So, so I do have a thought about that. That I didn't say anything when you were talking to Kevin, but one thing with your enterprise fund is you balance what you expect in revenues with what you expect to spend. Mm -hmm. um, if we need to functionally add money for engineering, add it now, don't wait till later because you physically have to vote a budget in order to take it to town meeting and you balance the revenues with the expenditures. I'm, I'm, I'm not really- Let's wait a little bit yeah. on that, but okay. I agree with you. It's just yeah. a thought. Yep. I know I'm, I'm not agree with you. but I'm not also interested in-, in Yeah, we'll visit that after. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing budgets with me, everybody. Sorry, it's it took okay. so long. I just really, um, I thought it was important to get through that. No, that's fine. okay. Um, so that's done. What Bike else do you want to get on? before we talk about the annual town meeting? Uh, yeah. So we need to do um, um, ballot I, actually, this is one more budget. Yard for yard. We did would like um, us to um, the select board to ask the CPC committee to consider Frontier's tennis court application. I agree with that. Because it was a miscommunication that it was not submitted. It was already filled out. The other towns are doing it. I think and it's crazy not to. I mean, I understand we the process. The we don't have the money. For, the money. Right. We know, CIPC knows we don't if, have the money. If it's two towns or more. Yeah. It's on the other, the other three towns. They're going to assess us one way or the other. Right. Either we're going to pay it out of taxes, taxes we're going to or tax we're going to pay people, it out of surcharge or we're going to that allows for that already, activity. We've already taxed people. And so I did ask a clarifying question of Darius because the comment I received from one of the members of the CPC was 
Well, if it's routine maintenance, it doesn't fall within routine. It's not, this it's not routine, not routine maintenance. maintenance. This, this, this is, is a rebuild. rebuild. This is a so this is a rehabilitation. Rebuild. The brand new tennis court. And it's we've not... used re so we did a rehabilitation article for the town common. Right. And the second thing that I question is the fact that CP, what it was, we, was we, communicated was it was in late. This has happened three times that I am right. aware of, and they were related to funding articles for, for land. So right. this, there is a precedent for CPC to go back and say, okay, they need, we received it late, but we realized the importance. And this is a town thing. Like we're either going to spend the money out of taxpayer money again, we actually or we're going to use the money we've already taxed people to do it. It makes no sense that we want to tax for people. some tennis court repairs. We paid for the tennis courts 12 years ago when we, when we did it with CPA money. That's what I thought. And it, it got us 12 again. years. It was only supposed to get us five. You, they wear out after a while. Yeah. I know, but the renovations before were, were more short, short term. And it was. It was just a patch. And it was supposed to last five years. And we were supposed to go back and do them. But we managed to get 12 years out of them. And they're in bad shape. Like, they won't even hold tournaments there anymore because people other schools are worried people are going to break their legs it's just so i think if the board did do that as you suggested carolyn it's going to carry more weight i do think that makes we sense need, I, just I, as, as an official well, i second your motion to ask the, them to reconsider and bring it to town and, meeting and we will accept the um responsibility they can yell at us for yeah miscommunication because that application was done we talked about this in multiple Venues. venues i just i wasn't aware who was supposed to send the and thing so and it's really the not the school's idea i mean the school's going to assess us no matter what it's up to the town to decide to put in the application and, and i didn't realize that or by cpc money if it gets voted positively in the other three towns so right guess what we're going to end up doing it one way or the other yeah. so I, those I capital guess. requests we got from um we did get a we did get the article for the forty eight some odd thousand for the tennis courts, um, but so there's the, the there's a there's an issue between CPC and the rest of us. So we don't see all of the information that they send out, mm -hmm. nor do we see their applications. Um, I've asked Alan to send me all the applications because we should have them on file and somebody in mm -hmm. case somebody asks. It's a right. public document. Yeah. Um, but that's sort of, that's what I was struggling with. And maybe Darius was struggling with the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So we make a motion. We approved, uh, I, I, Trevor McDaniel, did we I vote already? Guess. I can't remember. I'll vote it twice. I think it's that important that we not spend money twice, <clears throat> taxpayer money twice on that. Well, the state will be chipping in half. Right. So, and that's the other thing. So this is truly a recreation activity it, yeah. yes. that benefits. So under and so I don't many pickleball my, people are all over that. Country. And so we've already gotten support letter for the pickle from the pickleball right. folks. Yep. Um, and it's a big deal for them. It is. It's huge. So their support. Tom, Tom maybe the pickleball meeting. people should actually send a, a question to Community Preservation Committee. Mm -hmm. Well, and they should come to town meeting. Make sure Absolutely. So they can prove it. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So, and we did the yard by yard sign, right? No. No. What do you no. need? Um, these are these are some of the choices. And where do we put it? Where are we putting these? Well, no. The, this is this is being paid for by the conservation district. That if people do their yards, but you know, because we're doing oh, the, that goes in their yard. I think it's really important to have a white background with yep. dark. Um, you know, dark, like bold print. I like this. And this is nice, but you're not going to be able to see it. Right. This looks uh, good. Or even that one's more bold. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what, we're going to put this some is, dragonflies on here. Because, this is, I like, yeah. Because we want dragonflies to mm -hmm. um, eat mosquitoes. And and so, and we want pollinators. So, yep. okay. I like that. It's basically yep. this one. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. All right. So the um, idea was just to. Have some input. And then you need a vote for the Friends of Deerfield Fireworks Safety yes, Zone. Yes, this is Chris. This is Chris, right. Um, Chris has, uh, Chris Harris <laughs> has worked tirelessly with the fireworks people. Um, where's my thing? Oh, gee. Um, to come up with a place, as everyone knows, we've had, we had an open winter. It was very warm. 
uh, record warmth, but um, in the la in the end of February we had cold weather, and then we've had snow. And unfortunately, the peregrine falcons have not uh, nested. We hoped that they would have nested by March first, um, so they would be out of the nest by the time we had the fireworks. But they haven't even started nesting yet. So Chris um, has worked tirelessly to come up with some options. And one of the options is Walter Pekarski's field and the safety zone of 420 feet um, goes into our EMS parcel near the fire station, South Deerfield Fire Station. And um, so we need to sign off as that we are aware of the safety zone. So Chris, why don't you, you've uh, come up with this little statement saying that we need to vote that we're aware of it. So could you explain it a little bit maybe? Well, actually, um, actually I don't have it in front of me right now. I saw what, what Casey presented to you and I was yeah. fine with it. Seems uh, good. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, anyone, any property manager that's in this 420 foot radius all the way around, and there's four property owners that I'm talking okay. to, really needs to acknowledge, okay, it's a it's a conservative safety zone. Something went wrong um, that we would act, you know, to, to mitigate against that. But um, it's very conservative and it involves land that always has no unauthorized personnel in it and no commercial or residential buildings in it. Right. It That's the definition of the safety zone. Yep, looks good. And, and we have to present the final plan to the state fire marshal and we'll do that in conjunction with uh, Chief Bill Swayze of the fire department. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the, um, the sign off for the fireworks launch and, uh, safety zone circle. And I will um, second that with authorizing the chair to sign. Okay. So All those in favor, Trevor McDaniel. Carolyn Nessa, aye. So just give that, we're, we're signing it off, Chris, and it's going to Casey, so you can- We'll scan it and send it to you, Chris. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you, Chris, for um, Yeoman's work on this. Oh my gosh, you've, I know you've spent hours and hours yes, going back thank and you, forth. Chris. Appreciate thank it. you. Um, uh, item for earmark funding request date representative Natalie Blay is that did we do that already I don't, I don't I don't know what that is I know Tim was working on all of those maybe it was just acknowledging them because he did he did all, he did to all everybody of to all he of them all so thank them. you Tim for all of that work we'll just bypass that for now if um, we have to put it back on we can now we're we're really getting into the uh, town warrant that's the last item we have tonight correct right. and so we can handle that well I got an anticipated item I wanted what do you got now? No. <laughs> what do you got now? It's not on the list. No, just, teasing. just. Oh. What do you got? Well, oh, well, my um, based on my last, my previous experience in the insurance industry and my credentialing, um, I am concerned that the activities of the special response team at um, at our EMS um, might not be covered by our insurance policy. So. I just want to pause on the activity for clarification of coverage. Okay. Um, so I would like us to vote that, um, so Casey can send out a memo tomorrow morning that we voted a pause on um, any activity until we have clarification of, that of insurance. Of insurance okay. All right. So, so you make that motion. I will make that motion. Second the motion. And then we'll revisit this at the next meeting and make sure we've got right well, before whatever we need. Yeah. Okay, you can call the meeting to get it. So my question is, is, what do you actually want me to say? I just want you to send a memo to the our South County EMS that um, activities related to the special response team be put on pause until we have clarification of insurance coverage. And if we have clarification, it can come unpaused or we can come back and visit. Yeah, you could revisit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Any, all those in favor? Um, Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay, thank you. All right, so the warrant tonight, uh, we have got uh, 
so first what I read here, I pulled, right? You I have pulled your everything. Yeah, I got mine. Okay. I pulled everything that I had records of in okay. writing, okay? Except for one thing that came up after the finance committee meeting on Monday. Right. So what you see is you'll see two consent articles, um, which we've been doing the past several years. Yep. It combines reports of officers, compensation for elected officials, gifts. It all combines like six, seven items into one consent article. Yep, that's fine. Got all those. Article two is another consent article yep. that does special appropriations. So reserve fund, mm -hmm. OPEB trust appropriation, yep. out of district placement for BOCAD. Um, do we now, still need the 350? I think we can take off the 350. You, the 350, it doesn't need to happen. Okay, okay thank great. you. Let's remove that. I just wanted to make sure with you, Carolyn. Like you see yep, town no, we're all set. It's the maximum amount that maybe. No, the reason why we're all set is because um, we had we did a special fall meeting. That's what I thought. So because this is, money wasn't available till after July 1st. Okay. So three is our revolving fund. Three is our revolving fund. So article four, I found out late that we can, we need to eliminate article four, which is a creation of a revolving fund. Care, um, Brenda reminded me that we can't do this. This is okay, what so he was talking about. And yeah. so Kevin was talking about related to cemeteries. Right. So, so that will go away. Okay. Five to six town. We'll classification classification um, plan. plan. Did we have a hearing on that yet? We've had one hearing. We're having another one. To the personnel board? Is that the idea? Yes. Okay. Great. I just realized that we have a problem. Because you got a post? Yeah, the posting. Okay. We have do not have enough Zoom art Zoom accounts right now. I know. I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. All right, Chris. So that'll get worked on. Um, six to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from the. Uh, oh, this is snow and ice. Fine. That's snow and ice. I Seven. left it there just in case. Yep. Seven. Um, omnibus budget. Um, eight. Okay. No, keep eight, going. Eight is. Um, <clears throat> So eight is this appropriation. Oh, the tennis courts. The okay. Tennis courts. Yeah. So but I if we had can a get separate it... article that I received from Darius. Yeah. Um, and the total is for eight forty-eight thousand six hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty-eight cents. Right. In the capital plan, I rounded it. Okay. But on Saturday when I changed it, I rotated that back to this number. Okay. Um so basically, this is similar to what we've seen from them before in terms of so in, article requests. in case it doesn't get into CPA. In case, well, either way, if it doesn't get into CPC, we at least have the article to fund through taxation. Okay. All right. right. So that's... I left it there. We could always yeah. pass it over if it's going to be in the CPA. Right. We need it in CPA. Okay, great. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer. Oh, the sewer the enterprise. Sewer fund, scam scams. Fund. Yep. Okay. Um, Article 11 and 12. Capital. That's where okay. things get a little complicated. So there was a, dis, a a conversation at the finance committee meeting about capital improvements mm -hmm. and whether to consider and have the board consider borrowing. a capital borrowing yeah. for those capital improvements that we see ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I looked to see, because FRS did this a few years ago before I came back to town. They did a capital borrowing article that was approved by all four towns. So right. I went back and I looked at some of the language of that. Tweet things a bit. I created a ballot question, mm -hmm. but I also, usually the ballot question has to mirror what the Warren article says and vice versa. Yeah. So what I did was I created those two things and I sent them to our financial advisor, Margaret McLean, and asked her to have bond council look at it. Okay. If we want to put this on a local election and not call a special, we have to get it done by Friday. Right. Which means, and I think I forgot to print this because I was trying to catch up with something we hadn't, mm -hmm. I hadn't finished for you guys before the meeting started. So really the question is, is do you want to consider a ballot question for capital borrowing, a de debt excluded borrowing for capital improvements first? Second, um, do you want to, you know, what we should do, um, we are should we do posted, this for Are we fall. properly posted for tomorrow night? Yes. For the select board? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If, if the finance committee votes it, 
And I'm willing to vote. Well, let's so let's leave it in. Yeah, let's, let's leave, leave it, it in. in. Let's discuss it. And at worst, we can we could do all of this in fall if we can't do it now. You know what I mean? Worst case scenario. Worst case yes. scenario. Then we I'm, can I'm do, a sure we would have to do a special election. We still have to do a special election, but it would be. No, it's too expensive to do a special. I know election. it is, but it's that defeats the purpose of trying to be efficient. I get that, but it's hard to put all this together that fast. It's hard too. to put it all together without a more in-depth discussion. What we do know, well, then we don't have any money for cap. I know, but well, let's, but then let's make it. Let's vote it in the fall to move forward with it as a special town meeting, and then it's on the special election in the spring. In the fall, it's October. You usually have October meeting. Yeah. End of October. Mm -hmm. So you only have like, you know, yeah. six months and then you're voting it. So you're pushing all your capital for a year. That's ambulance. That's everything. Everything. You're pushing all your capital for a year. We'll discuss and it tomorrow hey, night. Let's just let's, 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 let's leave it on here now. Yeah, thank prepared. you for doing that. That's important. I'm really uh, yeah, so I have a question. Um, I did send it out. Mm -hmm. I won't have heard back until probably at the earliest tomorrow. Right. Um, one thing, if you did want to consider it, to send it to the local election so we didn't have to call a special election, right. um, the information has to be ready by Friday right. to meet the 35-day requirement. Yeah. So if you want to consider it, then you have the ability to take a vote. We could vote it now, right? And just you could vote it. it, but I don't know about the election. I don't know whether you can bypass an election question. Oh, got it. Um, okay. You well, can bypass a Warren article. You know, let's figure it out tomorrow. Then. So you actually have a conversation with finance committee because you're posted for that meeting too. The issue is, is Carolyn has to be at CIPC too. Yeah, but unless you, we have quorum without you. No, the, I, I, well, I think, uh, no, because CIPC is at five o'clock and the uh, finance committee is at six, right? No. Okay. And I have a four o'clock and I'm just, you know, I'm just zooming the whole time. Okay. And I have seven o'clock. We're going to get a sweatshirt that says I zoom. <laughs> I, I have a seven o'clock. We should get it. <laughs> we have to do this first because I have to be at senior housing because I'm the quorum. Yep. Leave okay, away. so let's leave the Warren article. All right, that's yeah. fine. Yep, we, we can always pass over thirteen it. CIP. I just the CTA. If, if, if the finance committee is not in favor, of it, why, you know? Okay, so here's the other thing: you guys can vote to close the warrant as of Friday, and sign at your convenience, mm -hmm. or vote to close okay. the warrant because it has to be not less than thirty days prior to the meeting. We right. can do it tomorrow night. You can do it tomorrow night. I, 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 but I, I just wanted you guys to have something right. to look at. No, this is great. It's just I Perfect. just don't want to vote and then have the finance committee right. Say, right. No. So, so let's. Why don't you take it up tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. So Article Thirteen is CPA. Article Fourteen is the whole thing with the. The registry of the deeds registry information of deeds related to the yes. Indian House, right? Indian House. For fifth meeting, it's going to be on there. Um, okay. To see if the town will vote to pursue it. So this oh, was a cable. solution that was presented by PVMA. Lisa's aware of this. No. I, Article 14. Yeah, I that's mean. fine. We'll figure that out later. That's okay. And so I think it's what, a what's ridiculous happening, waste what's of happening. time. The town would to hold the deed instead of the mass historical. Yeah, side. because they and can't, so they can't get in a some... car and drive 50 miles to figure out what's uh, going on. I have no idea why. It's but so you're pathetic. Right. It is pathetic. What are we paying for? This is taxes that we pay for people in Boston to come and do the it's job. Been we have put this on years. annual town meeting for four years because they can't drive out here and look at a building and say and the job is done. Paperwork. Come they, on. They, they're complaining that they're understaffed. <laughs> I I'll, we're understaffed. I can bring a phone and do a FaceTime. They could see that it's done. Like, I mean, physically, many, there's more than one way to skin the cat, so to speak. Just on um, that's well, it's pretty no, rare. no, I'm gonna stop. No, knock to cats, by the way. Right. Okay. Um, to establish the uh, so this was a request from Darius to establish a capital stabilization fund for FRS. It makes sense to put it on there because everybody says every time they say we should do a capital fund, and then every time you put it on, they're like, no, I don't want to do a capital fund. And then it, it's a back and forth. And and so this actually creates a capital stabilization in a similar manner as the board as yep. the yep. town did several years. It makes sense. And then the opioid stabilization. Okay. So opioid, I questioned this. Because Carolyn made a comment to me last night um, 
there about is new changes language. to the law. So there's new language. I okay. ha- I asked I got I asked counsel because I got the articles from counsel. I left them in, mm-hmm. but there's two things going on. There's a request that the legislature is discussing about not forcing towns to put things into a stabilization fund. There's also DLS's comments that Brenda brought back to me. She had her annual training last week. She said there is a way we can do this that may not require these two articles, that we might be able to do this through free cash. So they're telling us how we're supposed to spend the money? Yes. It's no. in the No, it's in the settlements, Trevor. You what can you only mean? spend it for the purposes outlined. That is not has not changed. Um, those are the purposes. That's why they're there. Um, I mean, but you can just do to prevent misuse of opioids and implement implement prevention seven. education. Period. Tre- Trevor, the new language is supposed to be more liberal than than the initial language that, okay. Casey, uh, that Casey, I can. So this Casey. is the initial language. I asked council to check. They were going to okay. check. I checked. We're supposed to have a meeting on Monday about it. So what we might want to consider, Brenda and I talked about this. Maybe we put this off the call. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any money yet anyway. To your point about creating funds, though, because if we don't have to do a stabilization fund and do a vote through free cash, yeah, then my you... concern was preserving that money. The problem is the gonna... money might come before we have the establishment. Well, we already have some money. That's why I wanted to do stabilization. I didn't but want to But then you got to need a two-thirds vote every time you want to spend out of it. Yes. But I that's know. that's what the law. This is how the law but, reads yeah, now. But this you're doing this as a placeholder. Let me find out. At okay. the meeting on Monday. Well, All I'm right. just going to ask Lisa if she knows anything. All yeah. right. I'm supposed to. I'm, we're supposed to have new the new language on Monday. So. I, hey, I, I'm not sure what happened. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I lost video from you guys. Is the oh, camera wow. off? I didn't even see that. Hold on. What happened? What happened? I'm not sure. You can hear us still, right? Yeah, I can still hear you fine. But the video just cut out like 30 seconds ago. You want a battery? It's not a battery. Maybe the squire wants to go bail. Oh, the video stopped. Too long a meeting. It's 9.30 at night. It's tired. There we go. I see you now. The camera was tired. So I understand you, that. Sorry, I had to do budgets. Um, so do you want to leave these in? Yes, let's leave them in. You can pull them out later if you need. We can pass over them. Then the uh the moving of the dates we'll for get, town meeting. I will have new. We can yeah, we can get that settled for the annual town meeting this shall be held third Saturday of May each so this year. Is a request from meeting a member of the nine a.m. for the consideration of all business. And then the following the Tuesday at 10. The problem is with, with, for me, and it's only one month. I want to go into June. Uh, but people are gone. All, yes. People start vacations in June. They're Although gone they in June. They usually start until the schools let out. Right. But Listen, the like, let out like, in May. They're gone. They're not letting out until anybody in two thirds of the way through June, June because of snow days. June 21st, right, right now. Anybody in Old Deerfield is going to be gone. Yeah, but they don't. Those are the people don't usually show up for them. Well, they may. A lot of them do. The residents. I. I don't know. I just feel like. So you got two articles. You have an article to move annual town meeting in the election because they're tied. They're tied together. Yeah. Then you have another article, and Julie's request was to do a, do this separately to set a fall special town meeting. Brenda and Julie and I have talked about this numerous times. Um. I honestly think it's a good way for us to plan to set a special. But you never know. Like, but but a lot of times you might. So oh, okay. What's her the comments comment? say in this language, um, the this allows the select board to cancel the meeting if there's no business or move it or move it. Because sometimes you can also we're in November. Another one. You don't have right. to limit yourself. All right. That's if fine. worse comes to worse and we have to have another special, we can do that. This just sets an expectation for a fall town meeting because as long as I have worked here we always from like 2005 on, we have had a fall town meeting. Yeah. I, I think I might've missed because a couple. Because the budgets are so late. Right. But that's why I'm thinking why move the regular, if we're only going to move the meeting, our, 
a regular a meeting weeks. per month, why bother? Because we always do the fall meeting now to fix the budget. Will it, will it affect Frontier's budget or anything else that it we're, might. you know, I mean, we move it so far. Like they have requirements of when they get, you know, budgets right. in or something. I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like we have much. to have a budget voted by June 3rd. I don't know. I mean, um, now the request has come to come through. Why don't you? Why don't we? Why don't you ask the ask Julie about it tomorrow? Because it is part of the warrant. Now I have not yeah. sent this to finance committee. I wanted you guys to look at it first. Okay. So then we've got okay those two articles. We'll we'll talk about them, and then you've got twenty. How do you feel to treat Saturdays as legal holidays as determined from time to time by the select board? What's okay. that for? So what this is, is this is a request from our interim, our former interim town clerk um, to accept a portion of the general laws that allows you to treat Saturdays for purposes of voter registration um, as a legal holiday. You have to do this acceptance. Otherwise, you have to treat a Saturday lap like a regular day. And it comes through, um, and I, I well, put the explanation she gave. Is it any Saturday that we choose? Because if we do this, like you can't hold town meeting on a Saturday. No, 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 no. What am I, am I missing the here? Voter registration deadlines. It's the voter registration deadline. It treats Saturdays as legal holiday as Municipal determined from by only. time to time. So, so we could just pick certain Saturdays that are holidays and that means no voter registration on those days? Well, the change to the Votes Act is what prompted this. Mm -hmm. A lot of towns ran into a high expense because the Votes Act, if you didn't have this acceptance, the Votes Act forced you to be open on Saturdays, which was a personnel cost mm -hmm. that nobody anticipated. Um, acceptance of the provisions applies to municipal elections, not state or federal. Um, it really would allow the town clerk to hold voter registration sessions on Fridays, avoiding extensive costs for Saturday office opening. That's really what this is about. Um, she had asked about it in January. So I put it on my tickler list for the warrants. I, I mean, I understand, I guess, why. Because um, I mean, I would I would support it because of calculating that. filing deadlines and actually having the office open for voter registration. I know. All right, we can look at that again tomorrow, right? We got yeah. that out. Um, zoning change. So I don't have all language yet, but the placeholder for the accessory apartment zoning change was requested by the planning board chair. Yeah. <laughs> They've had hearings on that, and all. They yeah. have. Um, actually, two hearings. What's it going to do? Essentially, it creates an allowance for accessory. It amends the bylaw and reframes how ex how accessory apartments are treated in the bylaws. How they're assessed and all that? No, just the creation of them, square footage, that sort of thing. They've had months of meetings, almost a year of meetings about this. Okay. I, I will put the language in. All I right. just need to get it. And then this is the capital project plan. One hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars. Uh, it's more than that. What do we got? So you oh, have a million six. Sorry, but <laughs> there's at least one of those things that could come out of CPC. Just and that's one the senior housing thing. Um, oh and God. so you're going to see top to bottom. You'll see the schools first, then I think I don't have it in front of me, but my recollection is the schools. You'll see equipment for DPW. Capital has already pushed off a couple of project applications. Um, and by schools, I mean also FRS with this $48,000 bill for tennis courts is there. Then you have capital expenditures for equipment. And the majority of that is from DPW yeah, with the runner up being awesome. ambulance. Um, so we have a funding source for the for one of the ambulance requests or one of the scams requests, but we would have to the cardiac monitor. The cardiac this. monitors they would take out of retained earners. And these this list I could take right off of here. And the ambulance. So not only do you have 
sort of the cardiac monitors leave us no room in retained earnings for this fiscal year, but we could expect to not have to pay for the ambulance or the cardiac monitors until FY25, right, Carol? Uh, yeah, or 26 even. Depending depends, on uh, depends when availability I... and... Right. Still don't understand the three ambulance thing when they can only barely staff two. I really don't get it. So it's a backup ambulance, but they don't have the same. My understanding, but they, they don't put, have the same equipment on each. Ambulance. No, they do. They have the lifts in it. They have the cardiac stuff in it. They've got everything in it. But the third ambulance is an older model. I know not, that, but it's still like if it's not being used, I don't know. It just feels like that. You guys. That was our plan. Us. That was early on. It was like, oh, we have three ambulances from all towns. Let's keep them. We'll have one as a backup. We can do baseball events and stuff, but we don't have the staff to cover them because everybody's a paramedic now. It's a, it's a totally different system than it used to be. It just seems like a colossal expense to hang on to. But. So the question that came up at Capitol was approval of the purchase of the ambulance. Um. And so I'm not sure how to frame this, and it might actually need to be included as a separate article. If if we're asking for approval of the prospective purchase for the ambulance, for instance, and it needs to be on a warrant, um, I don't know if that fits within the regular capital plan article or if we have to have a separate article for that. Because they just went through this over at the South Deerfield Fire District for a purchase of equipment, where they actually are planning to take it to their annual meeting um, for approval, even though they won't spend the money until 25. And the reason why you need it is because um, you got to put yourself into the queue. Right. You got to put yourself in the queue. Not the ambulance, the ambulance is 700 days out, it's almost two years. And well, that we went through this with the freight liner, but we didn't put it on a warrant article uh, specifically to get into the queue. I have to really look at that loader. And that was actually something I could have, I should have asked Kevin to talk to you about, but I didn't think about it at the time earlier in the meeting. So we put several of these things off. Yeah, I know. The dump truck is. So Kevin's priorities include the dump truck and the sander, sander body. Those are his top priorities. Um, followed by the F-350 pickup purchase because of the, the plowing, the impacts on, of plowing on these pieces of equipment. All right. Do you need anything else? You should know that you uh, capital to... is probably going to want to um, return their votes, their recommendations by Tuesday to both finance and the select. That's okay. The okay. I'm and not... then we can close the warrant tomorrow and stuff. You, you any... could. I yeah. think uh, what well, you should do is make uh, this uh, part of your, your budget conversation. Because yeah. The articles actually uh, impact your budget. I, so it's going to be a little. I know, but I would like that to happen just because it doesn't, I don't want us not to be, at least have some consensus. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not making us, you know, guarantee that there's going to be whatever they decide is on. Right. What we're no, doing. but it's good to have, but we've been doing everything together yeah. and it helps a lot. I think it's very They're helpful. Smart. And to hear, hear people's other yep. arguments. Absolutely. So if we don't always know everything for sure. Right. And I, you know, so I'd rather make that decision tomorrow. Thank you all for staying so especially, late. Especially I'm so sorry it's so late, guys. Yeah. Appreciate I, it. It's a lot of work tonight. So thank actually, you. Chris, I was going to call you um, in a few minutes. So. Um, okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Yes. I'll thank you for all your work, Casey and Chris. Yeah. Appreciate everybody what you're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So uh, motion to adjourn. Um, I make that second. All those in favor. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.